All right. So I was just saying to the viewers here on Twitch, if you're watching this, I guess on YouTube, it's still the same. You are officially the earliest, okay? You guys are the most dedicated, all right? So pat yourselves on the back because this is round one of the Hidden Cup 3 qualifiers. Uh, the Hidden Cup 3 main event will be coming March 19th through the 22nd. Just confirmed yesterday that the prize pool will be at $50,000 with more info to come on viewing parties, more info to come on the specifics of the prize pool, all types of different things. But uh, this is the first best of five, uh, and there will be 16 best of fives in rounds one of this qualifier, and then there will be eight best of sevens, which will actually be a week and a half from now, and the winner of those best of sevens will make it in. There will be eight more players fighting to get spots in the main event of Hidden Cup where they will then be fighting with hidden identities. But for now, we know that Tim, he's here in the red. And Tim, uh, he's playing as the Aztecs. And then in the blue, we have Angelina Jolie, who has gone for the Mayans. Uh, game one is Arabia. And so we have HC3 Arabia, Hidden Cup 3 Arabia. If you remember Hidden Cup 2, uh, Hidden Cup 2 honestly didn't have the best version of Arabia. This looks pretty open, pretty exposed, but all the same, if you know Arabia, Arabia is all about mobility, usually. And uh, Tim is a huge legend of this game, guys. Tim played in Hidden Cup 2, played well in Hidden Cup 2, actually, and he's a bit like Doubt. He's like the Doubt of China. He's been playing for years. So most people expect him to be Angelina. Angelina is a Dutch pro who I believe was seeded at... I don't remember Angelina's seed right now, but let's just say the seed was not near as in, or like his skill levels has not been near as impressive as Tim's over the past couple years, because Tim's been playing for like a decade. He he's just a beast. So the way it's the structured is game one is Arabia always. Uh, and then the players picked home maps. So let's say Tim wins this, then Angelina Jolie, who I know has been practicing a lot, will have a home map to choose from, and then we'll play the next game on Angelina's home map. So that's about it. Chad is telling me that Angelina was 18th. Yeah, so the thing about Tim was he probably could have gotten a higher seed because he was seeded 15th, but he just didn't play a lot to get more games. Uh, here, I'm going to make it so you guys can see the amount of villagers. Uh, we do have an overlay to work with for now. We're going to have something that's even more updated for the main event, but uh, salutes in the chat for overlay guy for getting this set up for the qualifiers. So this is this is the key for me when it comes to the matchups, uh, civ wise. Aztecs they tend to be better if the game plays into eagles. Mayans they tend to be better if they can wall. And I'm already seeing Angelina has two house walls over here. So with some walling this direction, it could be pretty good for Angelina. You could take this gold. Has the deer in the back? That's an option. Uh, the concern always is with Mayans. Can you get to stone right? And you see the stone is here and the stone is here. So not so good for Angelina. Uh, if he can't get the massive walls required on the front. <clears throat> Tim came forward nice and early. Tim will not be too surprised to see that the villagers are already walling in Dark Age. This is common for Mayans. And it's pretty common for Tim to wall as well, actually, which is interesting. But uh, I think you probably will see Aztecs play this out aggressively into Man at Arms. And this little wood line is interesting. I I'd like to see a barracks there for Tim. That's a nice little wall of wood for him. Map for him isn't perfect. I do love this gold, this freebie gold in the back. It's like kind of like a Viper map, right? Getting that free gold in the back. Um, this gold, not great. This stone, not great. But I think these golds can be locked down with some early walling. And wow, we have some early fighting with the scout. Oh, keep in mind, Angelina does not know where Tim is. And I don't think anyone's going to bail on this engagement. The pokey pokes are coming in. This could be huge. And Tim loses the eagle. Wow. Tim loses the eagle, so that's massive. Like, at least Tim had some scouting in. At least Tim knows where Angelina is. But Angelina did not know where Tim is. Here comes Angelina now. And Angelina sees the barracks. Now, you need to avoid the villager. And sees the gold. See, this is scouting information Angelina would have never had had he lost his scout there. How many times have you guys seen Drush Fast Castle with Mayans? <laughs> A lot, right? If you've been watching this game for a while, a lot. Uh, the barracks is up for Angelina. Here come the militia. Now, the militia could possibly annoy and delay that barracks. No way! The villager doesn't have loom! The villager does not have loom! Tim's barracks is at 98%. It's a doubt barracks. 
It's a doubt barracks. I, I mean, he's going to complete it now. But this is some great harassment from a drush. We had four villagers pulled off of wood. Um, the drush is simply meant to delay, and now he can't take his gold. Wow! How important was the scouting there? Tim, if he if he won that eagle engagement, he would have been able to see the barracks and, or at least the militia coming in. This is a nightmare for Tim in game one. This is a nightmare. Uh, he's, he is on his way to feudal, by the way, so he's definitely looking to go for man-at-arms, but he does not have any gold income right now. Was not expecting the game to start off like this, and Angelina, I wonder if Angelina is palm sweaty mom spaghetti, like playing a legend of the game, Tim, and uh, you get off to a good start and it really makes you start to think, like, what, can I win this? Can I win this? What's going on? These are some massive walls, though, and, and this is a concern, right? If you wall like this, it looks pretty, but it's so easy for someone to then just tower and, and bust their way through. So, I always say Malay have to delay. You definitely have to see some delaying now uh, from Tim. And to be honest, uh, Tim, since he started with extra gold as Aztecs, he still was able to get four militia out and get man-at-arms, so that's impressive. That's what he was going to go for anyways, and now he's sending four out to gold, so... He's fine. <clears throat> Alright, so this is where Angelina Jolie needs to make a decision. He doesn't have huge interest in fighting this. Um, so it's either fight and get some value or it's delay. I think delaying is probably the better value. And Tim is chasing this down and he's sending one man at arm forward and he's sending five villagers forward to pressure. Yeah, if you see your opponent's Mayans and still in the Dark Age, you kind of know what's coming. And, alright, so, here's, here's the deal, Angelina Jolie is not going, oh, Angelina Jolie is not even going for the play I expected here, it's not Drush Fast Castle, he's making more militia, this could catch Tim off guard, he needs nine more gold, there's the gold, now Man at Arms is on the way, he's bringing him back to the barracks, so he can take an engagement, what is concerning is that his stones are forward, and Tim is probably going to break through, this is good micro from Angelina, and in a moment here, Tim should see. Yes, there are extra units. Tim should now know. I mean, that's great reaction from Tim. But he should now know that he probably needs to bail on this. And I think both players will, will probably be playing tower defense or tower attack in Tim's case. More man-at-arms. My goodness. Time to research supplies. <laughs> it's not actually the time to research supplies, but uh, here goes Tim. So all those walls, and what did it do? It just it just delayed Tim temporarily, and he's on the way. Uh, two archer ranges now for Angelina Jolie, and Angelina Jolie, I believe, really wants control of this stone. So the plan here is to tower. Ooh, well, hold on. Tim! Tim does have reinforcements coming in. Okay, yeah, tower. I actually don't love the tower. Ooh, whoa. Whoa, Tim's like, all right, let's go! Wow, this could be really interesting. Look at the HP on these villagers. That villager goes down. This villager will go down. Tim will get two vil picks. And it could even be a third. But then, how many villagers will Tim lose? That villager's close to going down. Tim's villagers... Man, this is, this is exactly the game you would have expected from Tim. If he makes it into the main event, any guy who makes it extremely messy could be Tim confirmed. I think Angelina could trap these villagers, though. If you can somehow get a house up there, Tim might not be able to escape. Tim killed a few vills, but Angelina has some archers out and has more men-at-arms, so... See Tim now building the range at home? Uh, Tim might make some skirmishers and archers of his own. But this is, this is a problem. Okay, yeah, now he has to get out of here. <clears throat> you just got here and the map doesn't look like uh, Arabia? Yeah, that's because... Angelina Jolie turned it into arena. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened here. Uh, oh, what is that mining camp? Oh my god, that is one of the worst mining camps you'll see in the qualifier. Oh, probably the main event as well. Jeez, is there not two tiles between that? It's kind of hard to tell. It's not too bad, actually. I'm overreacting. Typical caster. Well, now what does Tim do, right? There's four men-at-arms from Angelina Jolie on the way. We have an archer and a skirm, and he decides to tower his gold. 
Interesting, he towered that side of the gold, and then he has an archer and some skirmishers of his own, but for now, Angelina Jolie is, is leading... Whoa, well, hold on a second. I'm looking at the vill count. Tim has 36 vills somehow. Yeah, let's let's wait to see how many resources Tim and Angelina Jolie have, but at least with the military, I think Angelina Jolie has shown us he knows what he's doing, and he has come to play. He has come to qualify. Now, here come villagers. Angelina will tower here, and also is distracting the tower fire with the skirm, which I believe is intentional. Wow. Okay, so guys, um, I was a bit of a slacker. If you're watching on YouTube, you will have already seen it, but we did not get the Hidden Cup 3 qualifier talk show on YouTube yet. For those watching this on Twitch today, um, it will be up tonight, um, or I guess this evening, for depending on where you guys are from. And in that, Dave and I talked about how like high hopes we have for Tim, and Tim and Doubt are in the same group. So if Doubt beats Huang, the, and Tim beats Angelina Jolie, Tim and Doubt will have to play a best of seven to make it into the main event of Hidden Cup. But we also talked about how we pretty much expect Doubt okay. and Tim to go through. And right now, it, this has not been the easiest game for Tim, has it? And, and there's not a lot that Tim can really do to change things except get more ranged units out. So, no fletching for him yet. Uh, there is fletching and armor for Angelina Jolie. And Tim is building this tower. But it's just to keep the villagers alive, really. And he loses a villager. This is a really good position for Angelina. And that tower goes down. Uh, I, I guess Tim can run with those vills. I don't think Angelina will have many complaints except for possibly the vill count. I see him just now getting wheelbarrow, which means that he definitely did have some TC idle time. <laughs> Someone said Tim plays like it's 2014, to be honest. I mean... I can't really say, I mean, at times he does. <laughs> More like 2011. Uh, he, notice how he doesn't hesitate at all to build the stone walls. Like, most other pros will hesitate to build stone walls. Tim's like, nope, let's go stone walls and towers. That stone was meant to be used. I'm Aztecs, we don't need Jaguar Warriors, let's go. Okay, Tim's also getting wheel now. So yeah, he does have a villager lead, despite losing a lot of vills. Which means that Angelina Jolie had some idle time. But, uh, considering the fact that Angelina Jolie has armor, I think he'll be okay with fighting this. Let's look at their resources. Tim, he has 150 food, 300 gold. Angelina? Is building a market and has 600 food, and is on stone comfortably as Mayans. Oh boy. Is that, a, is that a raid coming in? I see salutes. Welcome, welcome, Hera. Thank you for the host, man. Hera's going to be co-casting some Hidden Cup qualifiers with me, guys. Uh, this is game number one. In a best of five between Tim and Angelina Jolie. And at least in my assessment at the moment, Tim, who's expected to go through in this best of five, is behind. Angelina Jolie is on the way to Castle Age already. Somehow is able to hold back from Tim's pressure early. And is on stone. And the castle will go up eventually, and Angelina Jolie will get plumes. Tim still hasn't clicked up. He has 500 food and he has 500 gold, so he's getting close. Man, as a tournament organizer, you have no idea how good it makes me feel to see challengers like this perform well. You know? Like, to not see the expected players be getting the expected result. And this is game one of the qualifiers, so this is sick. Um... What's weird to me, though, I guess Angelina wants to add some eagles in to uh, because he's expecting a lead skirm from Tim. I feel like a lot of players would go for the comfortable move of just building the castle and avoiding the skirms. But Angelina really wants to deal with those skirmishers, which I kind of like. Tim's base. Tim's base looks like MBLs. <laughs> it's like, like, I don't there's something about this. Notice how he doesn't build the ranges next to each other and the barracks next to each other on the front? This looks like MBL in a rated game, like, ah, I don't care where I place it. As long as I have the buildings, it's fine. But remember, remember these things, right? Because if Tim makes it through, if Angelina makes it through, we need to remember how the players play because we won't know the players' identities in the main event. Will be Eagles and Elite Skirm for Tim, who is halfway to the Castle Age right now. 
Now, there's one thing that Tim's not expecting, and it is the Eagles. He's not expecting that. He's expecting to see full plumes. So Angelina is, is almost baiting Tim into an engagement here, saying, hey, fight me. And now Tim sees the Eagles, and now Tim can't fight. So this is that was actually a really nice play from Angelina, because Tim hung around here for a little bit longer. Now, is it worth it to invest into the Eagles here? Because Tim is obviously going to have so many of his own. I think it might be, just for some room to breathe a little bit. The Eagles do have armor. They're not Eagle Warriors, though. They're just Eagle Scouts. A nice room to breathe. I think Tim is going to be fine. In fact, I think with the tower here, Tim will actually be comfortable taking engagements. But we've talked about it before. The thing with Mayans is that if they start well off, if they start safe, they just slowly get stronger and stronger and stronger. And Angelina is more than safe. And we have a second town center coming up. The eco balance seems really good. And the castle's obviously on the way too. So once that castle's up, uh, that tower will get shot down. And you're in, Tim is now in a tough situation where he has to boom, but he can't do damage. Still though, he has mobility, and, and eagles are a lot better in lower numbers. So it's real possibility he could maybe break through. Well, I was going to say break through the palisade walls, but never mind. T90 official, the Hidden Cup Qualifiers banner at the top of the screen is a bit too big in my opinion. You'd reduce you could reduce it by at least 25 to 33 percent. We're not gonna reduce anything today, but I'll I'll look at it afterwards. Thank you for the input on that. Tim wants to go in. That's actually I'm not sure if that's good or bad right now. I feel like that's very bad. But if you were to get in and, and get some rating in, it could be worth it. I wasn't expecting him to do that. The plumed archers will have bodkin and armor. I don't know. It just seems like Tim took unnecessary damage to the castle. But at the same time, if he runs in, Angelina Jolie can't pressure him with the plumes. This is a great way of, of giving yourself some time to breathe. There's the TC for Angelina. See, Tim could do some harassment. The eagles are quite weak, though. And Angelina has the quick wall fingers working today. Let's go. Well played. Only three plumes, but only three eagles. You could argue that the eagles would have never done anything had they uh, stayed outside the walls, so I don't hate it. But I, I don't love it either. He didn't kill a single plume. And Angelina will be on three town centers. Okay, so the difference long term. Uh, Mayan resources last longer, but Aztec farmers are actually uh, farming faster. So that's quite nice, and if Tim is able to get a monastery out, which he already has done, and collect some relics, which I think he's working on at the moment, uh, that can be good for Aztecs, because they also get 33% more gold per relic. So for Mayans, I think you really do have to stick the plumes in this matchup, at least for now. You have the option of transitioning into eagles yourself later, uh, but I think for now, you know, the, you have your stones protected, you're still on stone. Building a second castle, eventually a third, and going all in plumes is great. You can just hit and run with these plumes all day. Unless Tim wants to go for elite skirm, though. He did just get bodkin arrow for these skirmishers. And this is the problem with going for a unique unit. It takes a while to mass them because you only have one building. Whereas Tim has had multiple production buildings with his units. Um, I'm really surprised Angelina didn't just stonewall behind this. Tim is trying to break through. And Angelina is just repairing the house, which I guess Tim will have to run from anyway, but a bit of a surprise. 70 villagers for Tim. Uh, 69 for Angelina Jolie. Nice. Populations are very close. The only difference is the military count, but you could argue that uh, some of Tim's military is useless at this point. Like the skirms right now. They're not elite yet, so I don't see what they're contributing to the fights. He does have two relics, though, and he's going for... Okay, so the other ones would be to the left. Is this one here? Is there another one, or am I blind? Is he on the way back with it? How many does he have? Two. Chat, do you guys see it? I don't see it right now. There should be five here somewhere. Maybe... I don't know. We'll worry about that later. So I was about to say hi to someone in my chat, uh, and I realized his name had the word farting in the username, so hi to that person. Uh, I'm not going to say hi to any more people during this professional cast. 
Is it in Angelina's base? Oh, yeah, it's right there. Okay, good point, good point. Okay, I said the skirms were useless, but now they're elite. So now they're elite skirms. Now that can be helpful. I really think what Angelina should do is, is keep the plume numbers alive. And just go to the Imperial Age eventually, and then you have to make the decision of do you go plumes or do you go eagles. It's kind of tough, right? Because if you start going eagles, Tim already has so many. And so you're trying to catch up in numbers there. But if you commit to plumes, Aztec have really good skirmishers. So I feel like you need both, and my god, Tim is on the way to imp already. So shaky start for Tim by his standards, uh, at least he, he wasn't as ahead as many people might have expected him to be. But he has three relics. He's working on getting, or, sorry, he's working on getting his third relic. He has a castle securing this gold. He's building more barracks, so he's going to go for Elite Eagle. And also the Elite Skirm. He also knows about this gold, and he's stonewalling that in. Again, no hesitation to stonewall whatsoever from him. Oh, he checked for the hole, that's good. And he's also running over this way. Could possibly snag that relic as well, so that could be four. So, guys, uh, you might want to hear this. This is interesting. Um, I brought up to Dave that I didn't think Tim was playing much. Because I, I didn't think that he was full-time AoE anymore. Okay? Um, I brought that up to Dogal, who's also in the qualifier. Okay. And this, in my opinion, is something Angelina Jolie needs to stop. This relic should not make it back to Tim's base. But Tim reacted to the plume! And he'll convert it! Wow, okay. Well, that mine is now an Aztec. Uh, but anyways, I brought up to Dogal, like, Tim isn't playing much. And Dogal said, uh, I'm not so sure, because if you look at AV2.net and look at player profiles, you can see when they play unranked games. I didn't know that. So it actually, there's an unranked ladder, and it tracks your unranked games. And Tim has more unranked games than ranked games. So Dogal said he's playing against somebody, he's practicing with somebody, I don't know who it is, but... Uh, he said that he thinks Tim is going to be dangerous, so... I found that little tidbit of information interesting, and now since then I've been looking at unranked games on people's profiles. <laughs> 40 Rockers, I've not heard any complaints about stream lag from anyone else, man, so maybe refresh. Uh, okay, so this relic didn't make it back. And there are barracks now for Angelina, so yeah. Elite Plume and Elite Eagle from Mayans is better than... Elite Eagle and Elite Skirm from Aztecs. However, the Aztec player is going to have Relic Income. Aztec player gets the faster uh, upgrades because he was an Imp faster. And it's also a bit cheaper to go for, well, a lot cheaper to go for Elite Skirm and Eagle as opposed to two gold units like uh, Plumed Archers and Eagles. And that's only when like, the Mayan Eagles are only better after researching El Dorado from their castle, which takes their Elite Eagles from 60 HP to 100 HP. And that's not cheap. So I think what Tim has going for him right now is definitely the momentum. All right. So the first treb's already out, and Tim's saying, "All right, well you have to come fight me." And he's also kind of hiding his army too, which I really like. See, he's hidden back here. One treb is followed by another treb. Tim. Now he he doesn't know what Angelina's is going for. But I'm sure he assumes eagles at this point. Tim is at 200 population 40 minutes into the game. This is this is really well done. Okay, and I think he should spot this eagle now, correct? I think this is just a scout from Angelina to see what Tim's up to because Tim was hiding it. Wow, that is a lot of military. It's 89 military for Tim and 35 for Angelina. There's no way you can fight this. There's no way you can fight this. This game was so close. Now look what's happened. That eagle was probably pissing his pants when he came out here and saw how much military Tim has. It's crazy. And Tim will also have full upgrades on his unit soon. A nice quick wall, a nice gate from Angelina. The plumes are back. I think Tim should just break in. Yeah, attack a house, attack something. He's using his trebs against the house on the left. I think there's a hole there. Um, okay, he's thought twice about it. And Eldorado is just completed for the Mayan player, Angelina. But you're talking Eldorado Eagles against 56 Eagles, so 20 versus 56. You might have more HP, but Tim has doubled the numbers, and wow! 
I'm pretty sure he clicked to go in there. Thanks, DE. Uh, this choke point is going to be very good for Angelina at the start, apparently. But I still think with the upgrades that Tim has, Angelina can do nothing but run. And Tim just found out there's another castle here on the left, and he already has the trebs here. Now, the trebs are a bit exposed, though. Can Angelina hold on here? This is huge. It's do or die for Angelina. You have to fight. The plumes don't have many upgrades. We have 50 eagles on our screen for Tim. And we have 20 for Angelina. Guys, the monk is coming forward! Tim is sending the monk forward with the relic! It's like, in your face, buddy! I have enough relics. Here's a donation. This is how much I appreciate your stream, Angelina. Wow. He literally walked forward with a relic in his hands to rub it in Angelina's face. And the GG's called. Uh, Angelina, I think he played well. I think he played really well in this game. But Tim just kicked it up a notch in Castle Age, man. Um, I liked how well Tim was able to play despite his opponent having such a safe base. How good was that boom, by the way? Like, the Aztec farming definitely helped. But he did such a good job. He was never troubled by the plumes. I would have expected the plumes to get to Tim's base once with their mobility. But nope, Tim kept the pressure on. He kept the eagle production going. He kept the skirmishers producing. And that's game one and this best of five. I think Angelina will have some prepared strategies for game number two. Uh, because there's home maps here. And I know Angelina was training with Project Belgium and other players who are in this qualifier. Before we do that, though, we'll go to the achievements. I'm really curious. The KD was even, but take a look at the difference here. Tim is a boomer. He is a boomer. 18,000 food, 15,000 wood, uh, 2,400 stone collected, and 12,500 gold. Obviously, he had a fourth relic on the way back to his monastery. Um, so he would have had four to one with relics and 33% more relic gold. He had 91% of the map explored. Man, Tim looked good. Tim looked very, very good. All right, so uh, amongst casting that, I got a lot of input from people on the overlay and the sizing of everything. This is day one. We'll have, I think, six days of this qualifier on the stream, so I will take your input under consideration, guys. Thank you. Um, YouTube, you're, wa you're getting the full experience here, okay, because you get to see the whole best of five in the one video. That's what we're doing. I thought about it, and I decided that I'm going to upload everything in one video, all right? I'm pumped. So, Tim wins game number one. What I didn't get to talk to you guys about was the home map picks. So let's let's do that now before we get into game number two. Um, I actually have to pull it up because I don't have it memorized. Okay, so for the home map picks, Tim chose Islands, El Dorado, and Cup. And Angelina Jolie went for Ravines, Hideout, and Bay. So what, what's interesting about that is that Angelina Jolie went for two maps, which are hidden cup maps. He did not go for maps that are played frequently. And then Tim actually chose cup, which was a hidden cup map. Um, so yeah, w what's coming up next, we're not sure until we hop into that game. But Angelina Jolie, I know he was playing ravines. I know he was playing a lot of maps with Project Belgium. Uh, before we get into game two, it won't take too long. I just want to remind you guys of the brackets. Uh, you can see the full brackets there. Uh, we're currently in round one, and this is set one of round one so <laughs> a lot of games upcoming okay a lot of games upcoming <clears throat> t90 official has the entire first round been completed already no games are still going to be played i'll have a full schedule for you at some point during this broadcast but so people on youtube don't get bored we're going to move on now okay uh to all of you in chat thank you for being here game number two is upcoming i'm personally rooting for angelina here because i like all best of fives to go to five games but this is do or die. If you don't win here, you're not participating in the Hidden Cup 3 qualifier anymore. And you are definitely not going to be participating in the main event. Game 2. Alright. So, I need to talk about this. Obviously, that's kind of what casters do. Uh, game number 2 between Tim and Angelina Jolie. Here we have, you know what? This is a problem for me. <clears throat> this is a problem, chat. <laughs> okay. So, um, we added this new overlay. I'm not used to it yet. 
and our scoreboard does not have the um, the civilizations, right? So my issue is, this isn't what we're going to be using for the main event, but this is just temporary. And our temporary solution does not show the civilizations anywhere on the screen. So I actually need help. This symbol is Mongols, or this symbol is what? <laughs> <laughs> because everything else about it is nice. It's not Frank's, is it? Is it Frank's? It's Frank's. Okay. It's Frank's. We're going to trust Twitch chat on this. Again, this is what I'm going to use throughout the qualifier. Uh, what I'm using for the main event is going to blow your mind. Okay, cool. All right. Well, it wouldn't be a T90 stream without a hiccup. Uh, both players chose Frank's, and it's Hidden Civilization with no repeat. So I find it interesting. They left Mongols open. They left Huns open. Civilizations, I think, might be strong for this. Chinese could be strong for this. And this version of Ravines is different than any version of Ravines you've seen before because we've eliminated a lot of the extra hunt and we've added berries. And we've also supplied players with two areas to take stone and two areas to take gold in their little base. So you start with outposts. There's wood lines all around. Uh, there's gold stone, like I said. You have 10, 10 deer or 10 ibex. And then you have uh, the berry bushes. So I guess they really feel like uh, the early berries could be helpful because you don't have boars after the deer. But in the north, we have Tim, who won game one. In the south, we have Angelina, who lost game one. And again, this is one of Angelina's home maps. Players are really close together. And I love this map because there's so many different areas to expand to for gold and for stone, uh, as well as relics, of course. But you'll notice, like, if you get pressured on the front and you're Angelina, you have to expand out to here, to here. You have to know where the other resources are. So I've seen test games with this. Um, I've played many games with this. And I really feel like it gives players a lot of different strategies and um, to perform with as far as civs go and also just throughout the game. Like You could go really aggressive. You could go very passive. You could wall between these wood lines, though it is a lot of walling. I played a game versus Slam, for example, and I was Huns and he was Chinese, and he played super defensive. And I played more aggressive with mobility. And it was a good game. It was very close. <clears throat> Alright, so, I'm expecting scouts here, okay? I'm expecting scouts. In a Frank War, that's pretty much a given. I've seen a lot of Mongols, Huns, and Chinese on this, and normally you'd see scouts into archers with those civs. I don't think you'd see that with Frank, so keep an eye on what players do late feudal age when they're on their way to, to the next um, when they're on their way to Castle Age. Why Frank's on this map? Well, I think it's a, a solid civilization here. You have the early food, you have one of the best scout rushes in the game, and then also there's a lot of different resources to protect. So I could see the cheap Frank castles being very important on this. But just like in the first game, Angelina is walling with a single villager early. That's normally something you see with Mayans. It's not something you see with Franks too frequently. And you also saw the early mill there. Uh, Tim also went with the early mill. Nice stuff. I'm really interested to see what civs are picked for the new maps. Uh, in the early stages of the qualifier, and what people figure out before the main event. Because the reality is, I'd say about 30 to 40% of players in the qualifier have actually been practicing the maps. It's kind of sad. <laughs> but the other night, uh, Fire asked me to play with him. I played games with Bact, and I played games with Slam. And it was the first time they had played the maps that we were playing. Uh, it's kind of a bad sign when the person who's casting and organizing the tournament oh crap fire's there oh crap fire's there i've snitched fire i love you uh it's kind of bad when the caster is training the players <laughs> but it's okay fire's not here to know that we talked about him but my point is, is is once a bunch of games are played on the maps i think players tend to get an idea of what works and what doesn't and we just haven't had a ton of games at least publicly played yet uh, there are certain players who are playing their playing like crazy, and, and uh, we are going to see them in round one over the next few days. <clears throat> well, Fire, what's interesting, actually, is that Fire is in the group, on the other side of that group is Slam. So I think Fire plays Vodka, and then Slam plays Barrels, and I think most people think that Slam will win and Fire will win, and it will be a best of seven between Fire and Slam, which is, that's going to be a heartbreaker, man. That is going to be a huge heartbreaker because both of those players have played in Hidden Cups before. 
I, I think Slam didn't play in HC2, but he actually co-casted after playing really well in, really well in um, Hidden Cup 1. And actually, Slam beat Fire in Hidden Cup 1. I believe he beat him 3-1. Fire might have blocked that out of his memory at this point, but I believe I'm correct on that. So this is actually a lot more wallable than I thought. Uh, this gold acts as a wall for Angelina. So a wall here, and then wall from the stable to this woodbine. And the scouts will be coming out. You see Tim also making the stable. They're so close. Tim! Oh my god! Freaking Tim, man! He wants to make stone walls at this point of the game. Like, his, he has scouted his opponent, has a stable right here, and Tim feels like it's a great decision to stonewall. And you know what? He has the spear there. This is classic Tim. This is classic Tim. He quick walled it. Uh, there's still a gap over here. But I guess you will be able to spot if, if players come in. All right. Well, Tim decides to fight that. You have extra HP on your scouts as Franks. I'm not sure if that was intentional or what. Uh, I, I meant to say Angelina fought that. Tim has his scouts over here, realizes there must be a hole here. And all right, boys, so we have scouts for now. This is the only area that they can go through. But Tim still has a lot to wall. Angelina is already full walled. And that's good micro from Angelina, but remember Angelina had a weak scout earlier. Tim confirmed. I mean, we know it's him, but <laughs> Tim is one of the easiest players to guess in Hidden Cup because of how early he stonewalls. Interesting stuff. So it's never ideal to be in Tim's position, though, where you're not full walled, but your opponent is full walled. Because you don't know how much uh, military your opponent's committing to. Ooh, and, and this is good for Angelina. I also like the additional spears that are coming. Lots of walls from Angelina, who also is known for walling a lot. Just not the stone walls like Tim, and he's not as, as much of a legend. Hmm. Well, Angelina fights this. That's a good fight for Angelina as well. I think this is rough for Tim at the moment. Angelina is doing really well. Three kills and one death and continues to produce, which I like. You could easily say, all right, I'm safe. Let's go Castle Age. But you could also produce and punish Tim for not getting his walls up. I think this is actually a good position. Oh, and again, Tim, he loses two scouts. That's so bad. I think Angelina might consider adding an archery range here. Like, imagine, if Tim goes full spear defense and he loses tons of scout numbers, you could consider adding archers. Oh, this this micro is so important for Tim. Tim has villagers here. Tim has villagers in the mix. That's not good. He loses one, he'll lose two villagers to this. Angelina has 11 kills and 5 deaths. Beautiful. 12 kills and 5 deaths now. Tim is in trouble, man. Tim is in trouble. Uh, Angelina sitting pretty behind this, farming like crazy. Also has two villagers on stone, I guess just to make up for the stone that he used to stonewall? Yeah, not too sure about that, but this is great early pressure. On the bright side for Tim, he does have uh, most of his eco on this side. But, you know, again, Tim has to constantly produce... And you would expect Angelina, since he's been sitting pretty at home and now has more villagers, to have a faster uptime. Now, it's also really weird on this map, because you have these hills here. So if you ha ever are in Tim's position, you can't get to the area you need to defend yourself all that easily. And Tim just engages with villagers. It's that bad. It's that bad. He loses one. He loses two on the wood line. Angelina's using the spears against the scouts. This could be GG. This could be game over. Tim has nothing here. Look how far behind he is in villagers. It's about to get a whole lot worse, trust me. And the scouts being mi micro back, micro back. Ouch, man. And he's not chopping any wood. He no wood. Oh, man. Angelina. The micro god against Tim. Not really. Just Tim didn't micro so hot here. He's on stragglers for wood. So... The one thing that I've noticed is that Angelina does have some idle TC time throughout those fights. And you would expect with all those Vill losses for Angelina to be further ahead. Uh, also, Angelina did research Wheelbarrow, which idles that town center. So, definitely a lead. 
Um, building a blacksmith now, and we'll be heading towards Castle Age. Tim is... it's kind of manageable. He has 400 food and, and 50 gold. Maybe it's manageable. He did get stone walls up here, so he was able to do that. Rough start, though. And how good is that going to be for the series now? That's awesome. T90, Atomic Sausage is repping you. Awesome shout out to him. Oh, is he the guy? He was dropping gifted subs earlier, if that's what you mean. Yeah, man, I, I have to go in between game two and three. I'm going to go through a whole list of awesome people. Thank you guys for being hyped. But yeah, so I think what it had to do, Angelina researched wheelbarrow, and that idles your TC for about the time it takes to create three bills. I'm not sure that Tim researched it. Uh, but anyways, hey, what are we talking here? Immediate siege workshop from Angelina Jolie? Like maybe knights into a battering ram on the gate? <laughs> Tim! <laughs> Tim! I love Tim so much. He's going for more stone walls. This could quite honestly be the first time I've seen double layer stone wall at the high level since... Hmm... When's the last time you saw a double layer stone wall at a high level? I honestly can't even think of it. He should do it because the pressure could be incoming. Guys, listen, Fatslob, he's not a high level player. I'm sorry, all right? He didn't have the rating to qualify. It's the Great Wall of China, but it makes sense. You know what's actually better than going for a ram in this position? I think Angelina should drop a castle here, and then the castle fire will eventually shoot the walls down. So don't sacrifice your boom. Um, stone walls for Angelina on this side as well. Wow. I can't wait to see this map more often, because this is definitely not a map I would have expected to see double layer stone walls on. Especially when the players are so freaking close. <clears throat> Alright. So... I see a market. Oh, that market's to buy stone because he invested into stone walls over here. Interesting. Oh, and he also has a TC. Okay, second TC. So maintain that economy lead. And now just drop the castle in his face. He's lacking. He needs 40-ish uh, more stone. T90 official, what would Viper do if he was against Tim right now? He would say, well, Walden resign. Pretty sure. You'd have to ask him, though. I mean, realistically, it, this is not a bad play for any player, and this is kind of expected, because if you go for Siege, it takes a long time. If you build the castle, you're fine. Like, at least you hold that position. Now, what I want to know is what Tim does here. Like, I think that's the more pressing question. He just built a gate. So he was letting a scout out, which he had to create, right? Obviously, there's some relics out here. There's other golds and stones to take. There's not that many resources in Tim's walls. There's this gold over here. This one doesn't really count. That stone is kind of bugged in there. Angelina Jolie will complete that castle. And I heard a monastery from Tim. Yeah, so Tim wants relics. And now there's a siege workshop. Yeah, I think this is better. And then two town centers from Angelina, and Angelina's producing out of both of them. Third TC on the way. This is really good from Angelina. So when you fall behind at the high level, uh, if players are playing perfectly, you should realistically never come back, right? Like, if Angelina gets this much of a Ville lead and this much of a TC lead, his lead should continue to snowball, snowball, and snowball. But what you need to do in Tim's position, you try and match what your opponent's doing. So try and match the boom, defend, and then try and gain an advantage elsewhere. And so he's thinking about other areas of the map. And I think this right side of the map will be the most important thing for him. And this looks like castle, right? Yep, he needs 18 more stone. He can place a castle here. Ooh, interesting. It's almost like Angelina expects this. And Angelina sees it and is actually sending the ram this direction, guys. That's a good move. That means Tim has to build more stone walls. Oh, Tim noticed it. He tries to convert an Axeman. He really wants that relic. He's also on the way to this relic, too. And he's building a town center here. Interesting. Wait a second. 
Wait a second. Is there a gap between that stone wall and the tree? Or is that a diagonal hit? I know diagonal hits are possible. But if there is a one tile gap between that stone wall and the tree, that blacksmith is melting and this could be a really big problem for Tim. Panic Siege Workshop now. Only Tim could build a two layer stone wall at one part of his base and then leave a one tile gap elsewhere. <laughs> Only Tim, man. Oh god, what is this? What is this? There's a Mackinel now. Please don't tell me there's a hole there. I'm really not sure, man. Did he double check? I don't think there's... Okay, okay, there's not a hole there. But still, the units could come through. He's making a Maganel. So the Maganel micro is going to be extremely important for him. 11 villagers behind. But he, he will have two relics. Well, chat, can we please... Can we get, get some wall spam? Can that entire chat fill with stone walls for Tim? Because you do not see this very often. Yep, now more stone walls. If you're a Tim fan, this is what you came for today. <clears throat> I just, I mean... Angelina, you shouldn't overcommit into stopping those walls. I really don't think you need to. I think- OH! THE SNIPE! THE SNIPE! THAT WAS EPIC! THIS IS A 2 HP MAGNEL! That was so sick. He could actually get through here now. Tim Tim has another one on the way. But anyways, my point is you already are leading with the vill count. So I think now you, you, you live with that and you probably try and get to Imp. But guys, Tim, he's going for a fast Imp. He's going for a Fimp. He has enough resources to click to Imp now. So he knows he needs to somehow get his opponent away from him. Oh, this is so important. This is so important. Tim, how are your quick walls? He kills the ram? Honestly, think about it. If Tim is able to keep these units out, go in faster and treb that castle down, and also get all the relics, which he's working on, this is winnable for him. It's excellent game sense to realize I'm behind in economy, so I'm just going to live with that and go up to imp faster. But Angelina will be right behind him. I think he can actually hold this. Snippy in the chat says, Fact, Tim built the entire Chinese wall by himself. That's true, actually. Um, you can look that up. It's on Wikipedia. How many relics will Tim have? Okay, so he's on his way back with two more. He'll have four relics. That's crazy. Another castle now from Angelina. So Angelina will be behind to the Imperial Age, but way ahead economically. 90 villagers for 67 from Tim. Still, Angelina will have stone walls to back this up. Still, Angelina should win this game. The question is, what unit composition do you go for? We might actually see full Axemen from both of them. Because if you go straight Pike expecting Cavalier, and the opponent goes Axemen, you're screwed. If you go straight Cavalier, you can't really push past Stonewall. So it's actually probably a combination of the fact that they're expecting Pike, and also the fact that there's some range to the Axemen. Hmm. Alright, it's like every time I zoom in, I want to zoom out further. Another TC for Tim, so we'll try and catch up. And I think this is the only mistake that Angelina made all game, was not having something out here. To give Tim those relics was, was a mistake. Like that, that is something that is so small and will make such a big impact throughout the rest of this game. Ooh, university for fast masonry for Angelina. And then I assume chemistry? Right? And then you could go bombard cannon? No university for Tim. Interesting. Tim's getting block printing with Franks? With He really wants some value out of his five monks there. So now I'll have some extra range on monks, but Franks do not have fantastic monks. So the first treb comes out for Tim, but Angelina is creating two trebs because he has two castles. And I still think Angelina is fine. Alright, we have some poking and prodding on this side. That TC still seems to be good. Hmm. Don't tell me Angelina's out of stone. 
He's out of stone. Oh, he's building another castle back here. Okay, that's why he ran out of stone. Should be getting chemistry. Okay, he is getting chemistry, but he's getting chemistry after architecture. Chemistry takes a long time to complete. But does Tim have stone? Is Tim going onager? I think Tim wants to go onager. That is not a good sign for Tim. If that's genuinely what he's going for here, that's really bad. A light calf switch could kill that. Throwing axemen aren't too bad. Archer ranges. Is Tim... Okay, Tim is now getting chemistry, but I think this is too late. I, it's it's going to be a similar chemistry time for both players, and Tim just lost that castle. Tim is really under pressure right now. The reason I say Onager is not so good is because at this level, players cannot micro Onager. You need like six or seven of them to really force your opponent to run away. But Axemen? With players that can micro are fantastic against Onager. Also, Onager is incredibly slow. Here come the Axemen. It's taking some time. They're going for the stone wall. Now, does Angelina see that? He saw the Siege Workshop. He saw two Maginels. He has not mixed in anything else other than... Um, Oh, whoa, Tim's going for conversions, other than Axeman right now. There are some barracks, and so maybe we'll see some pike. Uh, and some hand cannon, and, well, I mean, bombard cannons are needed here, yesterday. This castle didn't do too much for Angelina. Onager's not on the way, for those that are wondering. I really think that Angelina should consider taking engagements here. There's the Axeman... Takes out the mango and gets deleted. Clutch play. The castle goes down for Angel. Wait, wait, wait. Will go down for Angelina, who is badly housed, guys. He does. He no longer has pop space. MBL confirmed. No longer has pop space, and like I'm beginning to worry for for Angelina because Angelina hasn't been able to push in. Um, he does not have the relics that Tim has. He still has more map control. He still has the lead, but Tim is making hand cannons. And it seems like Tim will have good production. Hand Cannon is a good play here. Tim also converted to Axeman. That's what Angelina tried to avoid earlier, which is why he deleted his. Um, Alright. How's your micro? The mangoes are not going to be so important anymore. And the Axemen have a lot of upgrades. And this is a solid fight for Angelina. Still with 30 more population. That's a solid fight. So hand cannons for both now. And probably not too many Axemen. This is... There's so much going on, but so little at the same time. It's such a slow fight. <laughs> it's such a slow engagement, man. Oh, man. But uh, Bombard Cannons are the most expensive unit that, that you can create. <clears throat> 225 wood and 225 gold. The micro has been good. Three trebs for both. One bomber cannon for both. A bunch of hand cannons for both. The halves are just a meat shield. The halves actually don't make a ton of sense here beyond a meat shield at the moment. And to protect if Tim goes for uh, some type of a switch. Both lose their bomber cannons. I see a lot of blue on the right side of the map, but it's mainly outposts, I believe. Yeah, and just a few patrolling halves. Uh, guys, I, I don't like Angelina's position. I, I think he could throw this. Tim does not. He has not wasted pop space with halberdiers. He has mainly hand cannon monks and bombard cannons. And he still has trebs around. And Angelina, who uh, does end up taking out a bombard cannon with the treb, loses the treb. Uh, now the bombard cannons go down for Tim. So uh, who even knows at this point? It's so, like, guys, casting is not an easy thing to do. It's ten times more difficult when it's hand cannon, bomber cannon war. Because you, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. <laughs> There's no ballistics. Like, here, look at this. A second ago, I could have said Tim had more bomber cannons, but he keeps losing them now. This is just messy. Messy stuff. Tim. Tim. More bomber cannons going down. So much gold disappearing. Okay, and now the fact that there, that halb has been prepped makes a little bit... Uh, it matters a little bit more, right? Tim did send in some cavalier. 
The help switch was definitely to protect from that. Angelina still has more resources. Honestly, if Angelina is just able to produce with those resources, Angelina should win. And tie up this best of five series. Oh, that is an in-your-face castle. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. I think Angelina is just lacking the production. You guys can't really see the production. We're going to work on getting this so it's more visible for you guys. But he only has three or four production buildings producing right now. Oh, God. Tim's Bombard Cannon comes in clutch. Ooh. It will die. The only stat that matters now is 36 military to 7. 36 military for Angelina Jolie. Who most people thought would get swept here. A lot of people would have guessed sweep or 3-1 win for Tim in this best of five. But Angelina practiced this map, had solid engagement in Feudal Age. All of that gave him a lead. 70 total population lead now for him. You start to see some expanding for him. Again, it was probably a little bit too late, but he's taking in all that extra gold. Tim can't stop that. And the monastery for Tim is right there as well. I think this is GG. I think Angelina is going to tie it up. Couldn't see him losing it after how good he played Feudal Age. It got a bit dicey in early imp, but it seems like he's really kicked it into overdrive right now. Got more production buildings, has more space to breathe. He's in, he's past Tim's walls. Nazar Sentry says Tim should have raided with the Cavalier. It's hard to say though, because Tim needed every bit of military here to defend. Like he had the Cavalier here and it still didn't make a difference. But you're right, maybe a little bit of, of raiding over here could have helped. It's really Angelina who's been in the position to raid, though. 200 population for Angelina. So, guys. Um, throughout this whole qualifier, it's very important that you guys pay attention to how players play. Because some of these players are going to make it into the main event, and their identities will be hidden. Okay? The, Tim could be Friar Tuck if he makes it in. Who knows? He could be Emperor in a Barrel. He could be... Well, some of the other names I'm not going to reveal yet. So, what is the other aspect of Tim's play that we're seeing here? He stonewalls. He has 115 pop versus 200 pop. And what's he not doing? He's not resigning. <laughs> so, Tim is known for playing until there is zero chance. A lot of other people will play... Uh, until there's a 1% chance of them winning, but he will not resign until it is clearly over. He's getting massacred. This castle will go down, this castle will go down. My goodness. Now, we're still working on it, but I will have Leary co-casting with me quite a few times during the qualifier, and uh, I believe we're going to have a resign emote for moments like this. And uh, I have to run it past Leary, of course, but I think it's going to have his face on it. <clears throat> because during the main event, we'll have emotes for a lot of the big players. Tim's did now start to raid, right? But at this point, now Angelina can just take your golds? My god, man. My god. Well, no agenda show. Thank you for the eight months. Lightsaber, thank you for nine months. This actually gives me some time to thank people. There we go. Tim's like, nope, you cannot thank people for subs. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Pog champ for Angelina Jolie. This is hype. Gets the win and ties it up in the first best of five in the qualifier. Well, congrats, Angelina Jolie. The next game will now be on one of Tim's home maps, which I'll talk about in a moment. But it all stemmed back. Whoops. It all stemmed back to Feudal Age. Tim stonewalled early, but he couldn't get the walls up, and Angelina just kept producing. And a lot of players would have just gone castlage with the resources, but Angelina said no. I have to pressure, and man, did that pay off for him. He actually had less stone and gold than Tim did, but he had way more food and wood, um, and just pressured at the right time. And I think that if this game went on for another 5-10 minutes, there was enough stone and gold around for him to catch up in those categories. There was just no way that Tim could kill the amount of military that he had at the end. Angelina Jolie really pressed home his advantage in Imp. <clears throat> Castlage was a bit dicey, though. That's two games in a row where Angelina Jolie has let Tim get four relics. Think about that as we move on. Okay, so normally this wouldn't be very embarrassing because I would clip the individual games. 
But since the full best of five is going to YouTube, um, and they're going to get to experience what it's like on stream sometimes. I've been trying to hydrate more, which means I need to take a quick little break. All right. So one thing that you can talk about while I'm gone <laughs> and before we launch the next game is the fact that Tim has Islands, Eldorado, and Cup as his home maps. We'll be right back for game three. All right, guys. Uh, how many viewers do we have right now, by the way? I don't have that up on my screen. I'm kind of curious. Thank you for waiting. Uh, before we get into game three, uh, wow, there's a lot of people. Can we just have a collective salute, possibly? Can we do it that way? Are you guys going to get upset with me? Because I genuinely cannot thank every single individual for the subs and resubs, but I can see your names. Just can't speak that fast. I'm working on my auctioneer training, but for now... I'm still pretty much a noob at that. All right. Thank you, chat, very much. Uh, every salute that's going out is is thanking all the subs and resubs and people for showing up today. License guy, thanks for the gifted subs, my friend. Uh, Ariat donated some bits to the stream. He said, T90 just had carpal tunnel surgery. So happy to send my bed ridden, spend my bed ridden time watching Hidden Cup 3. Well, dude, uh, rest up. I hope things heal up for you quickly. Sorry to hear about that, but happy to hear things are getting better. Uh, Soulpine donated 20 bucks. He says, shout out to just Mongol things. Can you guys hear that guy with the leaf blower outside my place right now? Uh, he said, been watching on YouTube for over a year and I'm excited for Hidden Cup. You have such a great community of terrible farmers here. <laughs> Chat's getting called out and I am very excited to be a part of this community. Good luck, Tinati. Thank you, Soulpine. And yes, thank you, just Mongol things. He was doing that even before the stream today. It feels good to be on the other side of that one, let me tell you. <clears throat> Feels very good to be on the other side of that joke. All right. Game three's coming up. Just kidding. Game three's here. Let's do it, guys. All right. Ladies and gents, welcome to game number three. And we have islands. Now, I actually need to go back. I'm sorry. One second. I'm a pro streamer. I'm experienced. You guys know all about this. Uh, I made a mistake. And I have to rejoin to fix it. One moment. Okay. We're back in. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. Ladies and gents, welcome to game number three in a best of five. This is a best of five in round one of the Hidden Cup 3 qualifiers. Angelina Jolie is playing as the Italians, which I think is kind of expected on a water map. And then Tim... He chose Persians on Team I or not Team Islands, Islands, guys. What? I was thinking Italians, possibly. You could see Vikings. You could see Japanese. He went for Persians. All right. Well, this is one of Tim's home maps. And like I said, I know he's been practicing offline. All right. I know he's been playing some games. So Persians are a fantastic save. Like, there should never be any real question mark over using Persians. Because Persians are strong on all maps now. But it's just a surprise. Now, <clears throat> you guys are all making archer range jokes. But I'll let you know ahead of time. I've deleted them, okay? I got the archer ranges off the neutral island. We don't have to worry about that for Hidden Cup 3 islands, okay? So fortunately for the players, they won't have to deal with that. Uh, they can still build there if they'd like to build anything else, like houses or castles later on. But yeah, archer ranges have been dealt with before the tournament. So if it's Italians, you would expect Angelina Jolie to go for full water control. 
Uh, Italians, they have the cheaper fishing ships, the cheaper dock techs. It's also less expensive for them to age up. So it makes them, in my opinion, the number one island sieve. But Tim has something else in mind. Like, is it possible that Tim will go for a landing of some kind? I think it's very possible. He could still dock. He could still fight for water, but it would not at all surprise me to see Tim drop some villagers over here and go for stables, uh, go for stable, rather, archery range, a bunch of different things. Now, wouldn't it be hilarious if he actually lands here? <laughs> um, that would be pretty funny, but I'm kind of expecting a landing here for Tim. <clears throat> Big difference between islands and team islands is that on islands, you have uh, neutral islands in the center that have gold and that have stone. So uh, also, one thing we've done, how many people remember that islands game between Hera and Viper, where Hera had three relics and Viper only had two? Do you remember that? If you haven't seen that, it's on YouTube. It was ridiculous. It was dumb. It was brilliant all at the same time. We have two relics on each island, and then we have one relic in the center, which I believe is very, very fair. There's no reason that any tournament should ever have a map where someone has three on one island and two on the other. It's just unlucky for one player and lucky for the other. So that's what we've done, uh, which I think is a, a very important thing here. Tim is docking the front. Interesting. He's decided to dock the front. It also says he has 15 villagers. So it, he uh, seems to be like half a villager ahead of Angelina Jolie at the moment. Persian TCs work a little bit faster and that ends up being like one free villager in Dark Age. That's pretty much all I have to talk about for now. Ooh, okay, this is... I take that back. Angelina, ooh, failed with this. And seems to be planning on bringing in um, the boar with the scout. And if that's the case, that indicates Angelina will not be going for a landing, because normally you'd want your full HP scout. That was unfortunate, though. The boar did not cooperate. All right. So that will hurt the uptime for Angelina Jolie a little bit. What would you be thinking, chat? Oh, man, this boar! Oh, man. That boar did not cooperate for Angelina at all. But what would you be thinking if you pick Italians on a water map, and then your opponent picks Persians? Ah, this boar also not cooperating. My god. Now, I, I personally would expect a landing. There's not much you can really do about it, except try and scout for it. War elephants, really? <laughs> War elephants? Alright, looks like we found out why certain people aren't in the qualifier for this event. This would be a sick spot for a tower if Angelina Jolie were to land. Both the golds are there. This has been a very sloppy Dark Age for Angelina. I got housed there, I don't think that was intentional, the board lore was late. Uh, but we'll be going on the way to Feudal Age now. Uh, initially, I had Research Loom, or Clicked Loom. And then bailed on that. And we have uh, four fishing ships soon for Angelina. Four fishing ships soon for Tim. And Tim is also on the way to Feudal. Now, the crazy thing about Persians. Not only does your town center work faster in the Dark Age. But also that means that you are on your way to Feudal Age a bit faster. So pay attention to this difference here. It's pretty huge actually. Because Tim has more eco units. And it's going to be very close. Everything about this looks like a water build. He's not making a transport ship. We're not seeing a transport ship from Angelina either. <clears throat> oh, what a day, guys. What a day. Uh, there's still a lot of work that I'm doing. Um, I actually have a big announcement in a few days. Um, well, first, how many people are from the Netherlands? Anyone out there? Because if you're from the Netherlands... We will have a huge viewing party in the Netherlands for Hidden Cup 3. Uh, there's a company I'm involved with, and I think they can have 200 people at once. Food, beer, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll be announcing that soon. Um, so, like, there's a lot of things that are still in the works for the main event, but Day 1 Qualifier is looking exciting so far. I can't say where yet. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, very much looking forward to telling you guys about everything. Um, the prize pool, while full details haven't been announced yet, it's, I believe, at 49,500, and we'll probably break 50k before the, the tournament begins, so, just very, very excited for the players, very excited for this community right now. Okay, bear with me, I have to tell Robo something.
Get everyone hyped up and then go silent for 20 seconds. <laughs> All right, cool. <clears throat> so three docks for Angelina, no surprise here. Angelina's producing fires. Seems to be a perfect bill. Tim going to his third dock now. Also producing fires, but staying defensive for the time being. Oh, this could end up hurting. Uh, it is common to go for a dock in Dark Age and then also go to berries, but later in Feudal Age. So that could hurt Angelina to have those berries forward. That's really bad map gen for him. Nice little choke point for Tim to patrol in and defend with a demo or two. So far, nothing too exciting happening. Just fight and control for water. When I look at these maps, it doesn't seem like there's a huge difference in, in the wood, does it, guys? Like, maybe Tim has a little bit more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, it's like, it, yeah, maybe it's, it, it is in favor of Tim. I think Tim probably has, like, one more clump. If that becomes more and more of a problem on islands, just start picking Malay, apparently. <laughs> yeah, is, is the map closed at the bottom of Blue's Island? At the bottom of Blue's Island. Ah, good point. No, I think you can cross here. I believe you can cross over this. It looks like it'd be closed off. But that's important to pay attention to. Tim so far hasn't seemed to make a move past that with anything. It's weird how he's positioning his fires, though. Do you see what he's doing right now? This is so peculiar. Okay, demo v demo. He must not know where Angeline is coming from. He's repositioning fish. He's actually added a few more. But he's patrolling here. Why is he protecting that area? Well, I see the galley switch coming in now for Angelina. I think it's a good time for it. So Fletching also on the way for him. If he gets five to six galleys out with Fletching, he can micro his heart out and be in a great position. Did Tim just take those deer out with his fires? I think he did. What an animal. And he also sees the villagers. Villagers who do have loom now. But I think this will be good for Angelina. Remember, this was Tim's home map. Oh, the demo comes in! That's a perfect demo for Angelina. Exactly what he would want. Here goes Tim. Now, how funny would it be if the players didn't prepare... And they didn't look at the version of the map we had, and they saw those archery range foundation. <laughs> I could actually see that happening. I could see a player getting really confused by that, because they didn't prepare and look at the version of the map. That would be so funny to me. Like, maybe he's like, what? Was he landing me? Like, what if he builds a barracks now? Oh my god, he's making a barracks! I hope this is- I hope this was all part of the plan, and it wasn't something that, like, I hope he's not reacting. What if he starts making knights at his base because he didn't look at the tournament version of the map? Oh my god. That would be so funny. So bad, but so funny. I mean, it's really, it's honestly a good time to build the barracks and then get the stable and then transport a knight or two. That's not a bad decision, but um... Anyways, Tim is on the way to Castle Age. He is building a barracks and we'll see what he follows it up with. I really think Tim... He doesn't have interest in staying on the water too long. That's what it seems like anyways, because... As it stands, he hasn't committed near as much to water, and Angelina Jolie has one of the, if not the best, water sieve. What was Tim thinking? Like, this is his home map, and I'm just not convinced with how he's played it so far. Guys, Tim is falling behind in Game 3. He's falling way behind in Game 3. That demo won't do anything. His fishing ships now have to sail back here. And now he's adding farms because he knows he will likely lose his fish. If you're wondering about Angelina's situation and if Angelina will be going up to the next stage, Angelina will be going up to the next stage. We see the market. Once the market's completed, he'll have his buildings. And I think the only thing I can say now is that he does need to be a bit leery of Tim coming back on water, so he needs to take out these docks. Okay, he built the barracks, but he did not build anything else. And he does still have the fishing ships working. That's probably something that Angelina could have done a better job with, is hunting down the fishing ships. But the docks, um... Hmm. I don't know, like, on one hand he is way more on water, but Tim actually still has docks, and he could go for the faster fire ship, so... Maybe Tim could hold on here a little bit. As of now, he hasn't lost the fish. Yeah, Angelina, snipe the fish! See, this is actually the worst time to be doing this. 
Because Tim could trap you here. All right, so he's chasing the fish down. Imagine if you would have done that a minute and a half ago, right? He had the opportunity to, did not go for it. Tim built the barracks, but he hasn't done anything as follow-up. So, I, I, guys, I genuinely believe that he reacted to the, the rubble there. That's so bad, actually. <laughs> that is so bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's hilarious, too. Because if he was planning on doing something, he would have built the stable and made whatever. Oh, uh, well. Tim, here he is. And I think... It's really bad that Angelina Jolie didn't take out a dock. He didn't take out fish. Just some inexperience on his part, possibly. And, and now he is getting his upgrades. And he might need to flee with his fish and chips. But he will have a lot of war galleys. He does have Bodkin Arrow on the way. I would look for Tim to boom here, guys, with Persians. Uh, maybe add that second TC now. Yep, there it is. So yeah, he's going to boom on land. A lot of times what you'll see players do in Tim's situation is just dive in for the fishing ships. Um, and that's what he does. That's what he does. He kills two. He'll kill three. He will likely lose a lot of control on water. But at least he got the fishing ships and his fishing ships are still working for him. Well played. 49 eco units for Tim and 40 for Angelina Jolie. Uh, again, Angelina should be in a fine position. Just a bit of micro needed here. Uh, must have patrolled and not realized. There you go. Backing up, and we'll be sending these units in. So Tim will have the economy, that's for sure. But Persians do not get Bracer on their Galleons. They do get Fast Fire, and Fast Fire is, is normally what you see in early Imp. But if you want range as Persians, it's kind of tough. You'll have the Land Eco. You'll definitely have that. You'll have the lead in Land Eco as well. I think Tim has a nice balance of fishing ships and farms right now. Will Angelina live to regret not taking out those fishing ships? Because right now I'm just scratching my head over that one. Yeah, on this overlay, fishing ships count as villagers. For, that's why I say eco units. Um, so you guys don't get as confused. Nice demo. Yeah, Tim, at this point, he should realize he is going to be behind on water. But he has to boom. So he has to hold on, on water as much as possible and just boom on land. Until eventually that economy kicks in. If that economy kicks in, then he can win back water. Player identities are not hidden because this is the qualifier. So we're looking to find out who the eight players are that will join players like Viper, Tato, Max, Leary, MBL, Vivi, Yo, and uh, who am I missing? Hera. So I really should stick to an order with that. Oh, nice outpost from Angelina. And you can sail past here. So yeah, anyways, uh, the, the whole qualifier players are known. But I think it's very important that we pay attention to how players play it because... A lot of the players, or eight of the players we'll see in the qualifiers will be in the main event, and they will not be known. So I think Tim already has shown us a few things that he likes to do. Angelina, ooh boy! Could go through. Angelina could definitely go through. But right now I just wonder what's more important, right? Is it the water control or is it the economy? It's just two town centers producing for Angelina. Tim is actually looping the whole way around. I like how Angelina built his houses because they, they kind of act as outposts if any landings come in. I also like how he built the outpost over here as well. He did lose that one, but he now should know that Tim is looping around. This is... Oh! Shh! It's a transport! It is a transport ship from Tim. Oh, you know what? He just destroyed that outpost? I think he wants to land there now. Shh. There he goes. He has a lot of food. A lot of food, a lot of gold to make knights. So far he hasn't done anything, but he is getting armor. Remember, he built that barracks earlier, so we can go immediately to stable production. Back here. Oh, huge demo from Angelina. What a play. Now, will Angelina spot the landing is my question. Because Angelina seems to be holding really well on water. Angelina also will probably get to Imp eventually. And possibly faster than Tim. 
I think that will be close, though. Tim also has docked to this side, so we can continue to fight on water after losing a few docks on the front. This is what Angelina can see. Angelina can see everywhere except for here and here. <gasps> oh, wait, there's a scout! That scout, that starting scout! No way, Tim is going to choose the perfect location. He just had galleys here, and Angelina can't see it. Such smart thinking from Tim, who just lost a monk there. Wow. Oh man, the gold is here, Angelina doesn't have town centers there, and I don't think that players would ever expect someone to go for castle age aggression like this. I think what they would expect is for Tim to just go imp and go water, as opposed to landing and going knights. But why is he transporting over here now? What? <laughs> okay, first transport location, sneaky. Second transport location, not so sneaky. And oh no, now Angelina knows about it. And beautiful quick wall, beautiful quick wall will just castle here. See, now I'm not so sure. Like, Italians have Genoese crossbow, right? So Genoese crossbow are fantastic against knights. Now I'm not so sure how much this is going to do, but Tim is denying, uh, I would say, a fourth of this island, which is nice. It does something, at least. Wow. 97 villagers for Tim and 75 for Angelina. Angelina fell way behind. And Tim is just going to run on past! That was a big, big deal, because I think now, these knights can definitely do some damage, and it's panic time for Angelina. These knights have armor, they have extra attack, they have forging... You need to wall this up big time. Oh, this does not look pretty for Angelina at all. I think Tim is probably very happy with this, right? Because Tim is comfortably harassing on land, and he's untouched. He's untouched on land, and he's still creating navy so he could bounce back on water. Only risk now I see is Angelina is on the way to the Imperial Age. So I should say the Genoese crossbow, while they do have a bonus versus cav, they're not the perfect unit to have without full upgrades. But my god, this boom from Tim is crazy. I think Tim needs to make a decision now. Do you continue to create knights? Or do you stop producing knights and go to imp? He seems to want to produce knights. This is so weird. Angelina knows he's there. He can't do anything about it. <laughs> he can't wall in the vills, he can't attack the vills, because this is such a peculiar situation. He really needs to get Genoese crossbowmen over here. Some stone walls are nice. Tim is now making a tower? What? Just to keep those vills safe, I guess? I saw a transport ship for Angelina. That's going to make things interesting if he gets to Tim's base. Remember, Tim still has not clicked up to the Imperial Age, man. He still has not clicked up to the Imperial Age. This is crazy. He's just producing knights. All right, so the, the Genoese crossbowman will sit here. Actually can't sit next to the tower. Wow, this is, this is such a Tim game. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. This is such a Tim game. Like, no duh, it's a Tim game. All right, that monk gets focused down immediately. Angelina Jolie does not get the conversion. Let's see what type of damage the Genoese crossbowmen do. Ballistics is in. It seems to be t killing the knights pretty quickly. But Tim still is holding that presence here. Just don't know if it's worth all the wasted resources. Uh, now Tim will probably... like. Wh what does he do now? Another transport with a bunch of villagers. I think he wants to castle the neutral island. And I will say that Angelina Jolie hasn't benefited all that much from him. He got Bracer, which is helpful, but he doesn't have Galleon yet. Wait, is Tim going to castle the neutral island, or is he going to castle here? Don't castle here. He can make he can treb you down then, Tim. He's going to castle here. It's like, oh yeah, well, archer range. If it had space for three archer ranges. It has space for this. Oh, wait, no! Angelina Jolie wants to tower the same island that Tim wants to build a castle on! I think. What?! Three towers?! Can Angelina Jolie see that? He can! Oh my god! And they're both getting guard tower, too. 
They're both getting guard tower. Okay, so you know what? Building a castle here is a lot more stone invested. Towers isn't the worst play. Okay, tower v tower now. They both get guard tower. What are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? 140 population for Tim, who still has stables here. Um, he's going to go Cavalier, which is baffling to me. But he still is untouched at home, and he is going to have three towers versus one in the center, which is nice. Uh, we'll see how long they stay up, though, because obviously the, the Galleons will be coming this direction. Um, I, I believe that Angelina Jolie is going to be very surprised by the amount of units that Tim has within these buildings. Because uh, Treb has come over here now, uh, and I, Tim very well might just take out that Treb. Yep, Maganel. Oh, wow, he even dodged the castle fire. I got another shot. That was beautiful. All right, fast fires on the way for Tim. This could get dangerous for Angelina. Tim will has, have fast fires coming from both sides, I believe. The Treb's still up. Another Treb has been created. This Treb might actually take care of the towers. Tim engaged before fast fire, which is really bad, though. What a series, man. What a series. Guys, I, I know that like, not all of the best of fives in round one have some of the like big names that you guys might be familiar with if you're a, a more casual viewer, but my god, we have so many good players in this community. It's so cool to me to have players like Angelina being able to play up against someone like Tim. And and he could possibly win this series, man. Would definitely be one of the bigger upsets if... Uh, definitely one of the bigger round one upsets if uh, Tim loses this today. Alright, so that castle position is very important. Because now, Angelina Jolie can't reinforce with his navy as easily, because he has to sail past there. So that's that's going to be really good for Tim. The Knights, I always felt like that was going to be short-lived, but the reality is Tim has been able to take all of his resources untouched, uh, which I like for him. He's also kept this relic away from Angelina Jolie for a moment or two. And the Tower War still continues here. And now we have a castle for Angelina, so same logic, just protecting this side of his base. Hmm. So now, my question is, what do Persians do? Because they do not get... They do not have good galleons. So if you're making galleons, you lack Bracer. So the galleons should be better for Angelina Jolie. I don't think Angelina Jolie was able to research Shipwright, which makes... Uh, the ship's cheaper, which could be a concern for him. But finally, this tower gets cleared out. All right. Hmm. I don't think Angelina Jolie really has any tendencies to pick up on. Uh, Angelina Jolie is just a solid player. <clears throat> Won a few, a few Oscars. Is it Grammys or Oscars? Which one's the one with, with movies? <laughs> you can tell how big of a nerd I am. I don't even know. Whatever whatever it is. Yeah, he's won a few of those. Is it Oscars? Oscars. Ah, okay. Oscars. Yeah, yep. I knew that. I don't think you can justify going Cannon Galleon. Good question in the chat. I don't think you can justify going Cannon Galleon yet. You need to make sure you have full control on water. And I don't think he does. If you're talking about 29 fast fires versus 40 uh, galleons, the fast fires will win. You need demos or fast fires in front, Angelina. Your Oscars don't matter now. Your Oscars do not matter now. That was so bad. Yeah, fall back, use the towers, use the choke point, and then probably get some... Actually, they don't get heavy demo, right? So maybe get some fast fires of your own in front. Oh, but Tim will now castle here. Man, Tim has perfect castle spots. I think this all stems from that push that Tim had earlier. Look at that eco difference. Tim has 144 eco, that's insane. Could end up hurting him if he doesn't have pop space for military, but I think the point was so he could research all of his technologies. Finally loses this stable, by the way. I think Angelina doesn't know where to go at the moment, because if you go this direction, you have to sail past that castle. Hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. I think Tim will take the center island back under his control. 
Hmm. Now, the other thing about overbooming like this is you chop through your wood faster. I mean, you still collect it. He has 3,000 wood. But that's something to remember. It'll, it'll give us more of an idea of how much wood Tim really has. Oh, God. Angelina! Angelina! Oh, this is so good for Tim. Tim has 24 fires against 30 galleons. It just full surrounds on, oh, well, not full surrounds, sorry, but a surround on the trailing units there. The docks will start getting taken out. Uh, ever since this castle from Tim, it's looked really good for him because of the positioning. Angelina! That tower's kind of funny. So guys, you know what's interesting? Tim's castles are in the ideal position to protect himself. The one castle from Angelina he would not have wanted where it currently is, is this one. And that all... Th the reason he placed that castle was because of the stables. So yeah, he didn't kill that much, but you could argue that that position he would have never gained if it wasn't for that landing. Interesting, huh? Does anyone know if Persians get keep? I know Italians do. I don't know if Persians get keep, but there's now a treb here on this island for Tim. They don't get keep, all right. So he's fighting with a civilization, which is definitely worse on water and winning. Pretty epic stuff. The economy he, he has is just insane. Can Angelina hold on? He has more military. Now some of those are Genoese crossbow, which are somewhere on his lands. But he has more military, and he's built towers next to the docks. I feel like we're going to see a who has the most wood scenario again. <laughs> it's like impossible to kill someone on islands, man. This was Tim's home map, remember. This is this is sick, man. This is sick. Four hour game? Not sure about that one. I hope not. We have another qualifier, best of five to cast today. It definitely seems like Angelina has more wood. He has 3,000 wood, and he has 70 on wood at the moment. I think the lack of production is an issue, so he has to rebuild docks. There you go. There's also that fifth relic in the center. Remember, it's two relics for Angelina, two for Tim. Fifth relic is right there in the center islands. These relics can become very important, even if it's just for buying wood. Now, Tim is adding galleons now, and wow, he has 6,000 wood in the bank. It's so much more peaceful over here. Ooh, Angelina Jolie going for cannon galleon. But my point is, do you want to invest in the cannon galleon if you do not have the numbers? Because if you have less navy and you go cannon galleon, it's just an expensive ship for your opponent to snipe. Tim has been so incredibly wise with his positioning in this game. It's what Tim is known for. He's also adding in some galleons. They're worse. They lack bracer. But they're still galleons. The towers and the trebs make it so awkward for Angelina to, to push here. And it just create as much as you can. And then hit and run and hit and run and hit and run and run. Angelina Jolie is the key word in this sentence. Run is the key word in this phrase. That was not so good. Yeah, back up. Now you have your towers. There you go. Oh, wow. Tim just transported a trebuchet and lost it to villagers. <laughs> As if this game wasn't wacky enough. We just had trebuchets take out villagers. Did you guys know that Italians are good at that? I didn't know about that bonus. Whoa. Okay, Tim... is. It's time for him to use that food, apparently. He wants to raid with Hussars. So I guess he'll have to transport them over. That was Angelina's treb? I don't think it was. Was it? I mean, it's a dead trebuchet now. Does it really matter? 100% says Ginger Mountain. Okay, I trust Ginger Mountain because he did not say 99%. He said 100%. So I guess Angelina... That would make sense. He might have had the treb over here to take out the castle. I don't think Angelina has the numbers right now. Tim has 56 military versus 36, and yes, some of that military number is Hussar. Angelina has struggled with numbers all of the Imperial Age. 
And if Tim has the numbers, he has the position, and that means he can transport the Hussars across. And you know that's going to happen. This could be near GG. I mean, if it isn't GG already, once the Hussars show up. That means less population in Angelina in total. That means less Lumberjacks. Tim has so much on the map right now. He did delete villagers, by the way. He'll probably delete more. Uh, would really like to see him get that relic and that stone. I can see him towering here, possibly. But here come those Hussars. So now Angelina, who's already struggling with numbers on water, needs to now add numbers to land to hold. This does not seem all that doable for Angelina, who had such a good feudal age. And Tim's dropping a castle on him! Tim is dropping a castle on him too. This guy does not mess around with his castle spots. Stone walls and castles, probably like the two big things about Tim's play. He knows where to place them, he knows when to place them. He also seems to know how important relics are because he's attacking that monastery. The only risk of this castle is that Angelina can just make trebs to treb it down. But if you have hussars, you can take out the trebs. So the timing on the castle is really good. Hmm. Okay, and I think if Angelina comes back in this game, guys, he needs to get position in the center. He needs to treb this castle down. And Tim will uh, steal some wood. That's probably a good decision based on recent events. Hmm. Yeah, Tim is actually... He can't chop wood anymore. But he has 8,000 in the bank. And, okay, he's going to chop wood here. So he can chop some wood, but... Not on his island. Oh, nice quick wall from Angelina. Look at that. That house will mean the trebuchet will still stand. Oh, what about the navy, though? Tim, his, pro his production has been crazy. I think this is probably a choke. Wow, Tim's also here, and he's battering down that tower viciously. This is probably a choke where Angelina has to fight. Yeah, you have the towers, you also have about 40 galleons, or had about 40 galleons. Yeah, this this is the risk with the forward castle thing, so now the forward castle will go down. I actually... Normally, I'm of the opinion that if you build those castles, that's not smart. I thought it was smart for Tim initially. Not so sure now. Tim has 166 pop, 120 villagers. I think the military count is always going to be the most important thing. And the resource count. He has 8,000. Wait, no. Angelina has 8,000 wood. Tim has 6,000 wood. Is the comeback doable for Angelina? Let's think about this. They both have two relics. Angelina still has, like... 1200 gold there I, th I actually think the comeback is doable there's still uh there's not much wood honestly the meta should probably be bank up gold and buy wood <laughs> like instead of making hussar what if tim sold all of his food and bought wood the neutral islands make a very big difference here where are Tim's villagers going right now? I have no clue. I think he... I actually think he double-clicked these vills to repair... <laughs> he double-clicked... He, he was on this part of his screen. He must be zoomed out or something, because he double-clicked all of his vills here to repair, and then these villagers all tried to follow. Oh, God. This is funny. I love Tim. What are these villagers doing? A siege workshop? The Hussars commit... Oh, he's trebbing down the monastery! That's huge! And Angelina just calls it. Did he need to call it there? Did he need to call it there, though? Yeah, I think he did. There's 20 Hussars on his island. There's there's about to be rams on the way. He wouldn't have the relics. He probably could have kept these galleon numbers alive. But Tim had the extra gold. Tim still had production. He still had resources at this point. He had more resources than Angelina. What, a, what an interesting game. Tim... Just picked Persians on islands and beat Italians. You won't see that every day. Well, after game one, Tim played lights out. We were expecting the same from him. We thought Angelina would struggle. Angelina used one of his home maps, which is one of the new maps in Hidden Cup. And he got the win to tie it up. So I think here, uh, Angelina has two more home maps to choose from. We could easily see Angelina tie it up and take this to game five. For now, the score... 
is two to one for Tim, though. And here's the statistics. Uh, no surprise, Tim had more food. Tim actually had more wood. Uh, the stone count was similar, and he had way more gold. We're not talking two or three thousand here. Tim had eighteen thousand gold. That's ridiculous. I really think he probably sold some of the food, like I said earlier. Uh, maybe sold some of his wood. It's probably not the smartest move, but uh, Tim wins with his eco. Whew. All right. Till 911 says, T90 didn't feel like increasing significantly the amount of the wood on the neutral island to speed up island games. What? I don't understand. Sometimes when I respond to random messages in chat, I either confuse myself or the message itself is confusing. <laughs> I don't think the wood in the center made any real difference there. Uh, could have come into play, obviously, in a closer game. But now Tim just beasted it up there. T90, shouldn't Angelina have just used a few demos when Tim came rushing with fire ships? Not regular demos, though. That's the thing. Not regular demos. Like, regular demos are good in Castle Age. They're not near as good in the Imperial Age. And Italians do not get heavy demolition ship. So with that in mind, I, I think what he actually needed was to, to have the eco and have the time to get his own galleys, or sorry, uh, galleons and fast fires. But he didn't have it because of Tim's pressure. So like Tim's landing basically just distracted his opponent and then he was able to push at the right time. That's the way I see it. Fatslov from Sweden just subbed. Thank you for the nine months. Thank you, Not So Smoky, Ada Love Seal, Esmola, Kribo, Omar, a Kevmeister, Kava. Man, the amount of hype and kind words I'm seeing now with these recent messages is awesome, guys. Uh, I say we move on because we're a little bit behind schedule. Game four is coming up. Game four will be on... Please tell me it's what I think it is. Bay. Nice. Now, this is fascinating because they both picked Mongols, okay? So, as it stands, they both have one global ban ahead of the series, and then it's Hidden Civilization with free pick. So, they both chose Franks for Ravines, possibly saving Mongols for Bay, but a lot of other players were not picking Mongols on Bay in Hidden Cup 2. Like, we had a lot of Japanese here, we had a lot of Malians, we had a lot of Huns. Uh, we had a lot of Italians, actually. So, this is the first... Well, actually, no, not the first time you will see Bay. But this is Hidden Cup 3 Bay, another Hidden Cup only map. You can see the precious salmon in the center. But also a lot of real estate out here to push for. It's a map I like because players have options. And normally you'll see players combat for water if they think water's important. But also they have the land options and deer. Uh, the main change that we made with Hidden Cup... 2's bay and hidden cup 3's bay is that the there's more deer so you have this section of deer for both players but you also are going to have uh, additional areas of deer kind of similar to step if you've seen that throughout the map i don't think it's going to make a big difference but it's nice now if you pick mongols do you think you're going full-on prioritization on fishing ships for eco probably not do you think that you should just flat out forget about the water Probably not, because then your opponent will have a free fish boom. So I think we'll probably see a da. We'll probably see players hunt. And then that food will end up becoming important. Uh, Mongols hunt 50% faster. So I've seen Mongols lose because Mongols struggle on water. Mongols is definitely the sieve to think about when it comes to uh, sieve picking, though, because Mongols can be good on so many maps. Like, it could have been good on ravines earlier, could be good on slopes, which is another map, which is new in Hidden Cup. Any map where there's any hunt, and that's every map, Mongols can be strong. So I just, it was interesting to me how Tim, like, I even feel like Persians could be good here. And he went Persians in the previous one. Yes, this map could also be called Pants. Many people have pointed out that uh, this is the, the crotch region <laughs> of a dude wearing pants. Uh, you have Angelina Jolie is one of the legs. Tim is one of the legs. And then you have the belt region up here. We're going to call it Bay, okay? It's not pants. This is a professional stream and a professional tournament. Imagine if, if I actually renamed it to pants, though. Like, your brand's new to Age of Empires 2. You show up for the the main event of Hidden Cup. You have Arabia. You have Cup. 
you have slopes, you have ravines, and then you go all the way down this alphabetical list of maps, and then there's pants. <laughs> like, something that just wouldn't fit, okay? That just wouldn't fit, but you guys can call it pants all you want. Kalunia with 13 months. I'm actually going to go to some alerts now because I have the time. He says, thank you for always making my days funnier and brighter. Here's to another month. Kalunia, that's a big part of streaming for me. Um, I won't get into the big feelsy speech now, but uh, trust me when I say that I need people to watch. I need people to relax too. And so, yes, while I really enjoy streaming age two and while I enjoy casting age two, it's bigger than that for me. And it's always been important to me to, to make people's days brighter and relate to you guys on a more personal level. So I try my best with what I can. And Kalunia, my pleasure. Octo, welcome back for six months. Thank you, El Torre, Waylander. Welcome, guys. So, Tim is not docking. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen a player in Hidden Cup 2 preparation, uh, or now Hidden Cup 3 qualifiers, obviously, this is the first set. Forget about the water entirely. You look at Angelina Jolie, Angelina Jolie has docked, added two fishing ships, is going to build up towards winning that water, I believe. But Tim... This, this is a bit weird to me, but I like it. I like it. We get to see what works and what doesn't work, right? Hmm. <clears throat> Most relics on Tim's side? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, that's pretty imbalanced. We'll have to take a look at that. He has four relics over here. That would be, uh... That would be kind of a bummer, right? If that were to make a, uh, make or break a game. It shouldn't be like that. I'll talk to the scripters. But anyways, it's not going to be a factor in this game. So another aspect of this map is you can't wall your base easily. You cannot wall to the water, which is common on other maps. So if you wall to the shoreline, um, you cannot wall in this area. And as you can see, units can cross there. So I guess what Angelina will choose to do, now he's going to deer. Um, he could always wall to the dock, and then from the dock to the shoreline if he's worried. But Tim is going scouts. And Tim, oh, he got some hits in right before Angelina joined him in Feudal Age. So now he's actually winning this scout war. That's huge. If Angelina loses the scout, he won't know what Tim is up to. All right. Ooh, t Daddy, babe. Lorena. Okay. Tim is on the ball, and Tim also spotted the duck, so he knows what's up. But I don't think he's going to do anything about it. I think he's just going to let Angelina take the salmon. And Angelina must know that there's no dock. He's added a galley so he can patrol the shoreline. Again, I've never seen someone just forget about water before. Tim played in Hidden Cup 2, but I don't think he ever played on this map. I don't think he picked it. And I don't think uh, he was ever against someone who picked it. This is the approach I kind of expected. Has Tim benefited from, from not going on water much? Not yet. He could lame. You could use the spear to poke down the deer. Um, those villagers are always going to be exposed. Also, I should remind you, if you're just thinking about how the map will play out, there's only so much fish in the center. As much as I love salmon, salmon only have 225 food, and deep fish have uh, 350. So, there's not too much food in there. But you, you have the water control. Um, it's certainly worth it in early game. Whoa, Tim placed a house here. Is he coming forward? Whoa. So what I envisioned for this map when I first thought of the concept is to is for there to be pros and cons throughout the whole game. So, for example, Angelina Jolie has water, but he now has less control on land. Tim has more control on land, but he doesn't have the water. So that was kind of the idea, and Tim really wants to play aggressive for the Northern Territory now. No stable for Angelina, so he won't be making scouts because he's been making fishing ships. And he is housed a bit at the moment. T90, are you planning on altering any rules regarding laming? Uh, it depends. So, it's very likely... Oh, wow, Tim's making an archery range here. It's very likely we will make changes from the qualifier into the main event. Uh, it's a great way to learn about, like, if changes to maps need to be made. Spice up what the main event will be. Um, I really want to allow laming. 
but Microsoft has to, I'm, I'm in communication with them and pretty much they have to supply me a patch where I feel like it's in a good spot. Um, and so we're working on that. Still have plenty of time, right? Now guys, I don't think that Angeline Jolie will like the fact that he's blind to what Tim's doing at the moment. And Tim is actually taking advantage of the additional four deer out here. This was not in Hidden Cup 2. Remember, he doesn't have the fish. He has two farms. He still needs a lot of food income to ever go up. But imagine if he can take map control. And it's almost like Angelina senses this. He senses something's up. He knows he's vulnerable. He knows Tim has scouts. And he knows that Tim knows that he's been pretty much just on Spearman. So that's an excellent game sense from him to realize he's exposed. And look at that. Tim arrives. Well, villagers have gone to stone for Angelina, who has more food. And Angelina will now need to wall on a map where it's very difficult to wall, but players always find a way. It's actually not too difficult. You just have to wall a whole lot more down here. You could argue Tim could have denied that earlier. So I think now Angelina... Hmm. Guys, he has 800 food, almost enough gold to go up to the next stage. Imagine if he were to lose his fish now. He'd have, like, no food income. Tim is now going to take these deer. He's adding some farms. So he's taking the 10 deer here, the 4 deer here. He'll have 18 deer. Well, did I just get baby sharks? I got... <laughs> Shadow! <laughs> I'm sorry. He says, I want to know if you will get spooked. Okay, uh, the sound was on for me. Ah! Oh my god! That scares me every time. There you go. That scared me. Oh my god. Thank you so much for the support, Shadow. You're amazing. <laughs> no, I have it muted. I'm sorry. I'm, I have it muted for the day. Just pretend it scared me an awful lot, and then I'm going to lose my hearing because of it. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Angelina has the resources to go up. And now has now clicked up. Okay, so tower on this side tower on this side. He's pretty much secure. Tim decides to disengage. Can Tim just take out that dog possibly? Like, what do you what do you do here? I would love to see a demo. Oh, oh my god, Angelina is making a demo. We might not have the noise of baby shark, but we might have the noise of a demo. Chat, can we please salute? I guess you guys are doing T90 doing, but um Please thank Shadowruff for that. That guy's... he's a legend. There's a reason he's a VIP. Oh my god, this could be so huge! <gasps> Delete it! Oh my god! What? It crashed the game! The demo crashed the game! What the hell, man? What the hell? Sick demo, but maybe kill a few less units next time. Okay, one second. Please enjoy this this music while your party is reached. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> that was a sick that was a sick demo right there. If this wasn't if this wasn't a best of five, the title would be the demo that broke the game. Imagine that clickbait. That's for some other YouTuber to do. I would never do that. All right, uh, bear with me, guys. Sorry about that. That's actually hilarious, and we weren't that far along in the game. I'm going to assume that the game is fine. I just can't look at that area of the screen. Like, how, how does this work? Can we get some thanks to ease in the chat? Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. This actually gives me more time. Um, if you look at how Tim is playing this, he's coming back on the water at the time that Angelina Jolie is most vulnerable. So yes, Angelina Jolie will be arriving in Castle Age. However, he does not have deer as Mongols, and he could potentially lose all of his fish. And if that happens, he'll be in Castle Age, but he won't be able to do much with it. And then Tim will follow to Castle Age, be later, but he'll have a more sustainable economy. <clears throat> that crash definitely happened right when the demo came in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyways, I kind of want to see, did Tim scout the water initially? He did, right? I don't know. I, I'm just... 
It's hard for me to know how much players prepared, and it's still baffling to me that Tim decided to forget about it. But I think if you play like Tim did, and then go back onto water like he's attempting to do, it could work out really well. So if you're ever wondering how, how fast Tim was back in 2005, this is exactly what his games looked like. He slowed down a bit over the years, but his game sense is a lot. It's a whole lot better now. See how, see how much faster he was? It's crazy. Guys, these games were played yesterday. All the games are going to be recorded games, and we stack them up together, basically, so we're able to, uh, to cast them all in order. <clears throat> Trust me when I say live games would produce more problems for us. <laughs> okay? Trust me when I say the live games would, would uh, potentially give us some issues. Is Angelina really Dutch? Um, as for Angelina Jolie, cannot confirm. Angelina the player here, yes. Really Dutch. Probably the but the best uh, player from the Netherlands. That and uh, I think Golden Ends. Can someone confirm Golden Ends is also from the Netherlands? Tim Tim wasn't messing around here, by the way. He poked the other deer dead. Poked him dead. So do we look at the demo or do we not? It's really satisfying. I really want to look at it. What if we just keep it on the side of our screen? Okay, we just won't look at it head on. Okay. This is the qualifier. So this is this is basically beta testing for Microsoft. <laughs> let's let's go. Let's see. Okay, how many units does he have? He has a total of 11 units. I have to look at it. I just won't zoom in. Please don't crash, game. Please don't crash. I think he went down to two. Uh, I'm so scared. Come on, DE, you can do it. We made it, boys! We made it! Yes, let's go! Alright, perfect. Crisis avoided. Just don't zoom in on demo shots, apparently. So, nine units died to that demo. That was sick. Let's just get this up and running. Perfect. So, here's my point, though. Tim is making some fires, so if he's able to get these fish out of the picture... There's two farms and some berries for Angelina. He has five on food otherwise. Now, on the other hand, he's also going to be... Uh, he's banked up a lot of resources. And he's also going to be in the position to build a castle and go for Mangadai, which is really dangerous for Tim. But Tim is still hunting out here. Uh, he's on stone somewhere. Yeah, he's also on stone. I don't think Tim's position is all that bad. I really don't. But it really depends on what happens on water here. So, um, I did see Angelina got a small hit in. So if it's 1v1, Angelina will defend. And Angelina should probably be thinking about switching up the economy uh, into more farms. There's the castle. Lovely game. Can we can we please give Tim props for being a beast and going for a completely different strategy? This is a mirror matchup. This is what excites me. A mirror matchup. And both players have gone for completely different strategies. And I can't say one player is way ahead because of what they've done. I think with the amount of resources that Tim has, he could easily live without water here. I also like the scouting from Tim. Like the whole point of this map is if you take water, if you stay behind your walls like Angelina, uh, there's, there's negative consequences. And the consequence here is that he does not have the other resources he'll need on the map. So for now, he's fine. This is good repair and good defense on water. But we'll see how, what he can do as far as map control goes. 43 villagers for Angelina. Keep in mind, villagers also includes fishing ships. So he does not have as many vills, actually. It's just the fishing ships. And I, I think what I was envisioning from Tim is, is two dock commitment. He only went for one dock, so it didn't work out quite as I would have liked for him there. But he's castling the middle. Oh, what do you think about that? I, I do like this town center because it protects that side of his gold. Otherwise, you have some archers on patrol, and that's pretty much it. This map is not called Pants. 
<laughs> Actually, this is hilarious. Someone in the chat just said, are these fake names for Hidden Cup 3 qualifiers also? <laughs> Which is funny because Tim is like the simplest name that you could ever think of. And Angelina Jolie sounds like it would be a fake name. I didn't, I didn't put that together until now. That's funny. No, these are actual names for players. Uh, Angelina Jolie is, is what he has been known as for a while, and Tim has been known as this for a while as well. Um, I guess the second set today will be less confusing. We'll have Satal versus uh, Velez, where again, Velez is expected to go through, but this has been an awesome set. I think Angelina Jolie has gained a lot of respect here, regardless of how this, the game goes today, um, or the series goes today for him. And all right, I talked about needing to expand. Angelina Jolie didn't do that, but sent the two Mangatai over. And boom, Vil dead. 54 villagers for Angelina and 48 for Tim. So you could you could argue based on statistics that Tim is behind right now. It's very possible that since these games were played, I believe yesterday morning, that Angelina is watching this right now. I can guarantee you Tim is not watching this right now. But um, if you have any kind words for Angelina, make sure to leave them. I know that for a lot of these players... In the qualifier, they don't get to play in front of a lot of viewers very frequently. And I also know, since he's a Dutch pro, um, I know that there's quite a few people out there who might not have known he's existed from their own country. So, so what are we looking at? Upgrades. Fletching. And uh, can't click. Okay, Bodkin for Tim. So Tim has Bodkin Arrow. I guess it's in now for Angelina. All right, another castle for Tim. Wow, that's a lot on stone then. That is a lot on stone. Oh, and this hurts! He's not going to have near as many on stone. Actually, if Bodkinero would have completed a second earlier, he would have killed more villagers there. But he still gets two, and don't ask me how that villager survived. This castle, I think, was very much needed to secure the golds. Where's Tim going now? Why did he delete that? What? Did he abandon his wood line entirely? Do you see that? Well, I guess he thought the Magnetai would run in. That This is huge for Angelina. Angelina has 17 more eco units now. And he can just run right out of here. Tim is... He's behind. Massively now. Like 68 villagers versus 52. And if you go for a second castle this early, that means you don't have as much food in wood eco. So that's another. That's almost a good sign for Angelina here. Whereas if his castle goes up a couple minutes later, that means he had a couple more minutes where he prioritized on the, the right things with his economy. Good micro for Tim, though. And if Mangadai numbers uh, are going to be key here, and I think they will be, he's off to a good start in this fight. Angelina can't seem to get away, and Tim says thank you very much. So I'm not so sure who is ahead if Tim has two, Mang two castle Mangadai production. Where will Angelina place it? Whoa, well, hold on a second. Angelina will actually click up to the Imperial Age. Tim is really far from that. And the second castle's here. It's so passive. But there's still resources for Angelina. He's had the fish. He's now out of the fish, and he'll add some fish traps. All right. So now it's a question of how good Tim's eco is going to be. And can Tim pressure with the extra Magadai? He's still going to be taking deer in the castle. It's really not a great sign. Should he do it here? Probably. But when you have so few farms that you need to take gear... Uh, not gear, sorry. There will be no gear used here. That is banned. Performance enhancing drugs are banned in this tournament. But if you need to take deer... Uh, that tells me that you do not have the eco setup that you need to last for a long time in this game. But it's very typical of Tim to take some map control and then just stall the game out, cockroach it a little bit as MBL would. And uh, he's also looking to get the relics, and there's four relics on this side of the map, so... I I've never seen that before. It's funny how like, we look at all these versions of maps and then it, it actually ends up being in an event. We have a weird map gen, but... Something he should take advantage of, for sure. <clears throat> I think... Whoa, 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 whoa. Tim wants to wall in the gold. Well, Angelina probably won't push out until he is in the Imperial Age. He knows that Tim has more numbers. 
That is a Tim move, by the way. If Tim makes it into the main event of Hidden Cup, walling in resources, stonewalling your stone your your own base, sorry, that is a Tim move. Nice micro from Tim. I does not lose a single mag mega die to the ships here. Uh, could always redock. I don't think he needs to redock. I think this is just so he can walk past here. This is a bit risky for Angelina, who does not see the gold as being walled in. You will have Bracer now, but I'm not so sure about taking that fight. Okay, this fight is definitely... It makes a lot more sense. But that gold will be walled up. Angelina sees... Only that gold outside of his walls, and not counting the golds over on Tim's side. Alright, Tim. What's your eco looking like, man? He can click up soon. He can build his third castle soon. He's making siege workshops in the center, which is... It seems rather ill-timed. Yes, Angelina has poor map position, but now Angelina can force fights with the upgrades. Tim cannot take these fights at all. He can't take this fight, and Angelina says, Who cares about the resources to the north? I'm going to build a forward castle on your face, Tim. Wow, what a play. What a decision, man. The balls you'd have to have. Oh, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Okay. <laughs> we saw the demo earlier. I was really worried. Um, but yeah, if that castle goes up, that means Angelina can start making trebs and trebbing down that castle from Tim. And if Tim tries to engage, he has less upgrades. More numbers, but less upgrades. And the micro from Angelina was so good. I think we're going to a game five here, guys. Nobody expected Angelina to have a chance versus Tim, but Angelina showed up today. Tim still has not clicked up. Tim still has not clicked up to the Imperial Age. He actually has tons of food, but just, well, he needs to click now. He needs to click. Three castles to produce Mangadai from. More importantly, Tim is probably going to be down a castle. And the monastery where Tim has all the relics is right here, too. So, isn't that funny? Angelina didn't have them uh, in the north. He didn't scout them in the north, but Tim brought them to him. <clears throat> Looney Loser says 15 verse 18th seed. I wasn't going to be shocked if it went to five games. Well, Looney, I guess I should say this. For people who know Tim... They would have expected him if he tried to rank up to get a lot higher in the seeding, right? So, Tim is probably a guy who could have gotten like 9th, 10th, at, at, at like the highest I would have expected him at 10th, actually, so... Angelina is beasting it up right now. This is so good. Such a good fight. Realize that the castle isn't in range for Tim. Micro's down everything that Tim needs to fight with in the next stage. And the Trebs will be coming from the left side. Is this winnable for Tim? Or is he just dead at this point? He did convert that manga die, which is funny, because uh, that's an area that Angelina can hit and should hit. Oh man, he must not have seen the Vils there. There's a lot to focus on in that moment. Still am worried for Angelina that he hasn't been able to expand, and he's going to reach a point where he knows the gold is there and sends villagers out there desperately to, to mine the gold. Will he realize now that he cannot take that? Okay, he actually does. So now, he's gone out there to scout that. And sees that he might need a ram or two. I think he's been a bit too late to scouting some of these areas. If I were to say that one thing that Angelina could have improved on, it was just scouting the map. But now he runs out here. Now he knows that villagers have to be around. He's looking for them. He will not find them. Tim gets lucky. Those villagers will remain on gold. But Tim has his main gold and his secondary gold here. He has his relics, which I believe now is four, in this monastery. Tim is getting his upgrades. Can Tim stop this castle? Now, Angelina doesn't have that many mega die. Hold on a second. Guys, this is such a close game. It's 114 population for both. Tim is bringing the fifth relic to the monastery that is right next to the Trebs. Tim, move the relics elsewhere, man. Like, pick them up and take them to the edge of the map and rebuild a monastery at some point. I know that Angelina had a birthday recently, and I know you couldn't make it to the party, but he said you didn't have to bring gifts, alright? Oh my god, that stresses me out so much! 
That stresses me out. All right. Tim has to catch up on upgrades. Let's keep an eye on that. They're, oh, they're elite Mangadai. They're elite Mangadai for Angelina. That's huge. I didn't realize they were elite. That actually comes back to the food eco that he has. Only has 11 here, though. He'll castle, take that stone. He'll take this gold. Okay, so he is thinking about expanding a bit. Tim now has elite Mangadai. Oh, not the relics. I, wait, I want to see... No! Why are you building the new monastery there, man? Like, just build it up against the edge of the map? That's like, that's all the same part of the screen, Tim. Oh my god, dude. <sighs> it's alright, he's getting Elite Mangadite. He'll have full upgrades soon. He's confident. <laughs> I think it was Dave who once said, Pro players can be so stupid sometimes. I think that's a Dave quote, or at least Dave was quoting someone else. For people this smart, you could be so stupid. It's something like that. Okay, the Treb goes down. He's, he, hey, that gold's important, so he wants to get the relics as fast as possible, apparently. You can really tell that Angelina's been working on expanding, uh, because he hasn't been pushing as much here. I still think he should be happy that he has been able to take out the castle and deny these golds. Tim made knights for whatever reason. It honestly doesn't make any sense in a Mongol war. But it's just Tim things. And I'm waiting now for Angelina to make a put. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can see the throw. I can see it coming. Angelina hasn't been forcing Tim to fight. And Tim knows that these resources are exposed now because he had the houses and buildings there and he just saw the ram. So now Angelina probably will send units back to deal with that. Right? I mean, I hope he doesn't, but he might have to. Okay, he will hide underneath that castle. Having that castle there was clutch for him. He also had some Mangdai over here, uh, where Tim now has town centers to secure things. But you see how Tim knows the map? He has all five relics, guys. He has all this gold. This is very dangerous for Angelina. <clears throat> but... I know the, the emote Failfish doesn't get used very often. But that emote could not describe this situation more perfectly. Like, those relics, if he just... Oh, what is this? Oh, skirmishers. Oh, good thing Tim made knights. 500 IQ. Make knights in a Mongols war so you can clear up three skirmishers that go into your base. Perfect. <laughs> but, uh, but these relics, man, if he just took them to the edge of the map, it would have been perfect. 159 pop for Angelina, who is securing these resources. Angelina should win this game, especially if he takes that monastery out, but Tim has 34 Mangadai. It's 34 for Angelina, and Angelina has Skirms. So I think this is a fight that Angelina wins. If Angelina wins this game, we go to game five in round one. Surely now Tim can't keep up with production, right? Tim doesn't have the castles. Wow, that fight's so close. The monk healing there might actually make a difference. <laughs> look Look at the line of bodies for both of them. Quick, Tim. Get the relics and build them in another monastery on the same part of the screen. Angelina, finish him off, man. Finish him off. Can Angelina be the giant killer? Finish him off. Tim is making mangoes? Yeah, he's making mangoes. He, he's really going to struggle now because he has 11 farms to deal with skirms. If he had more farms, he could go for Hussar. He does not have the food eco. Angelina has 40 farms. The only thing I could be saying negatively about Angelina's position would be the fact he doesn't have relics, but now Tim doesn't. I don't think Angelina can lose this. He's taking a bit of time to produce. I think forward archer ranges would have made more sense. Maybe somewhere around where the island is, but... Uh, Still, uh, excellent micro here to take out the mangoes and use the scrums versus the mangadai. And now the trebs are here. This is this is good. This is very, very good. I, I think Tim, his mid-game hurt here by not having the farms. It was almost over-commitment to deer economically. Probably didn't take care of those fish. Guys, this is the shocker. Not gonna lie. I thought 3-1 Tim. I thought Tim might might 
fail on a game, like Angelina Jolie would have a, a really well prepared strategy on one of the new maps. I did not think that Angelina Jolie would perform this well on both of his home maps. The next game, if Angelina wins this, will be on Tim's remaining... He has two home maps remaining. He has Cup, which is a hidden Cup map, and he has um, another one, which I forget. But... My god. Tim is not known for resigning early, so if you're expecting a resign here, you should forget about it for at least another five minutes. <laughs> Angelina Jolie doesn't seem to think the relics are very important. Oh, man. I don't know if there's any monks watching this at home, but um, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, I'm sorry, okay? I'm really sorry. So much gold on this map. So much gold, so much stone to fight for, and Tim's just getting pushed further and further back. Honestly, this area here... Wow, three skirmishers. Again, this is the meta, apparently. This area here could be trebbed down, and that's like 30 vils from Tim's eco. But the priority should always be castle numbers. This is desperation now for Tim. He's hoping he can get a big shot. Um, yeah, he's sending all of his Mangatai this way. And he's hoping that he can kill the skirmishers with just Mangatai's. It's really hard to justify using Siege in a Mongol War because Mangatai have a bonus for a Siege. And, and Angelina Jolie is just taking out castle after castle. And he continues to protect the skirmishers with Mangatai. Really good play. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, these villagers will die for Angelina. These villagers will die for Angelina. That will make you stress a little bit when you're in his position. Tim continues to expand to all those extra golds, but he continues to lose castles. Wait a second. Is Onager on the way for him? Onager is at 10% right now. There's no way, right? There's no way Angelina loses this, right? I'm actually nervous because I think... I mean, we already saw the sick demo, right? We could see Onager save this for Angelina Jolie, but we're talking like 5% chance. As long as Mangadai are here, all of those Onagers will die. Every single one. But wait. There's also Siege Workshop. Okay, Onager's completed. There's also Siege Workshops on this side. Tim has a lot of Mangadai here. This might distract Angelina. Is this Tim's way back into the into the fight? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, Angelina! You expected Rams! But you have a huge surprise waiting for you in those siege workshops. Oh my god, Tim. And now, now, Tim has more manga die. He could get the relics. And this game is wide open. This is wide open. Tim can actually win this. Now, Angelina knows about the golds. So he's going to start raiding here. I like that, but Tim should still have manga die. How many castles is he on right now? One. One castle. That's it. Um, whereas it's like five for Angelina. There's the monastery. That is the exact same spot he built the previous monastery. So apparently positioning is very important. You have no idea how much that bothers me as a caster. You have no idea how much that bothers me. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure you have an idea. Um, he can't really make trebs, which is weird. Because you need to, to, to make Mangadai. If you stop making Mangadai in your trouble. And now Angelina knows that Onager's in. He also does not have Food Eco. Like, Tim, Tim is working on two Food Eco right now. So Angelina should still win this. He just needs to repop with the right units. Just no longer make Skirms. Yeah, he's making Mangadai now. Yeah, Ange Angelina can still win this. Should still win this, I would say. Just use the Hussars as uh, the sacrificial lambs. Use them against the Onagers. Watch how quickly Onagers melt when you actually know they're coming. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Oh, the monk goes down. The monk goes down. That's hilarious. Angelina's like, nope. <laughs> Doink. <laughs> oh my god. Is that it for Tim now? He probably has another Onager or two on the way. He is fighting with more Mangadai here, so he'll hold, but he can't make more numbers. 
Not fast enough, anyway. There will be plenty more production for Angelina. <clears throat> this is- this was supposed to be Tim's gold over here. This was supposed to be his. Perfect castle spot for Angelina <clears throat> to protect that gold. Uh, this is the concern. There's a lot of gold income for Tim, but honestly, he has, like, nothing else. I'm not seeing him chopping a lot of wood. Oh, okay, he is chopping a lot of wood. Okay, guys. If you are in Angelina's shoes, do you do anything different? I, this is just... I'm curious if you guys differ in um, opinion here. I, I really don't think you do. It's just all about hitting the right spots. So, you, you do need to hit this position. That's important. Um, I, I like that. But the reality is, even if you lose this castle, you're okay. What worries me is that he knows the relics are there, and Tim put all five back in that monastery. I swear to God. If Tim loses this series, and he didn't move the relics to a safe position in this game, I'm going to lose it. Cannot believe... Actually, at this point, I can believe, but initially I couldn't believe that he wouldn't move the monastery to somewhere safer. But yeah, that town center goes down, those villagers will go down. See, the problem now is, if Angelina takes the north, Tim can start taking this area back. But I think this is the wiser move, because you still have such a good position elsewhere. With only so much population, this is kind of how it goes. Tim is at 123 pop. It's 193 for Angelina. He has all this gold to mine now. He's just destroying town centers. Until Tim will deal with it. And Tim has to deal with it. And Tim is trying to deal with it. Tim has 11 farmers now. So he's he's improved. But he actually does not have any gold to mine here. And he does not have any gold to mine there either. So he has to take this. Can't really go for rams in a Mongol War. Because Mangadai and that bonus against Siege. And I think take care of this castle Angelina. And we're going to game 5. Wow. <clears throat> Honestly, Tim did him a favor clearing out the skirms. <laughs> because ever since then, Tim has never been able to take a good fight. He needed to clear up pop space. He overmade skirms. Oh, the block! Nice block. Beautiful block. Every other player in the pro scene would, res would resign in this situation. Hey, actually, maybe not with the relics. Maybe not with the relics. Relics kind of give you a reason to continue. But... <clears throat> Angelina just needs to start trebbing down this castle. He, he doesn't even need to do that. I, I think Angelina Jolie will take Tim to game five. Guys, everyone expected this to be Tim against Dal in the rounds two. I'm not so sure now. The way Angelina is playing this is is so good. Seems to be prepared. Went for the more I guess meta strategy. Uh, did what I saw more players do in the previous Hidden Cup. Will defend and hold this castle. Barely, but should do so. Now Tim wants to go camel. Does he have the food eco for heavy camel? I don't think so. Also, Mongols, yes, they get heavy camel, but they lack the final armor upgrade. So, uh... <clears throat> As every Aftermath player would say, POTATO! They're POTATO units! Yeah, good, perfect. Just use the Hussars against the Onager. It doesn't matter if you take losses, if you can produce more. Sorry to any Hussars who will get offended by that. Your lives are not valuable in this situation, but... Yeah, just protect the trap. I would have liked to have seen him wait for a few more traps, honestly, but... Still fine. Still it's fine. I think this is Tim's last fight. I think this is his last fight of the game. It's a desperation fight. Angelina is using beautiful micro with a few Mangadis and Hussars to take care of all the Onagers. There's one remaining here. I don't see that changing things. Angelina micros it down. It only fires one shot. That is Tim's final castle. Tim taps out before it crashes down. We are going to a game five in the very first best of five in this qualifier. So, I'd just like to say this. In Hidden Cup 1, we invited 12 players. In Hidden Cup 2, we had 14 players based on rating enter. Tim was one of them. 
and then two players qualified. In Hidden Cup 3, eight players were voted in as the top eight players in the world by other pros, and eight more players have to qualify. Can you see why qualifiers are needed in this community? Because Tim, most would have said, is better than Angelina, and Angelina is taking him to a Game 5, okay? Qualifiers are exciting stuff, man. Like, in many ways, I'm more excited for this because I I just can't wait to see certain names play in a tournament format. Look at the difference between the food wooden stone here. I, again, it was the mid-game for Tim. He hunted in feudal. I liked that, but he didn't think far enough ahead. He didn't think about the farming eco would need. And what the farming eco did for Angelina was this. The faster Imperial Age time. The Hussars. The Skirmishers. Tim, he only had wooden food eco. Or, sorry, he only had wood and gold eco, and it was not enough. So now, we move on to the fifth game. This will be the final game in this best of five. And it will be on the final... Uh, actually, I think they picked three home maps, right? So let me see here. Okay, Tim has Eldorado, and he has Cup. And he doesn't have to say ahead of time which one he uses. So obviously, now he'll, he'll tell Angelina and he'll start. But... Um, I'm kind of expecting El Dorado here, but I don't know. There's only one way we find out. Robo says only two home maps each. Really? Then what am I looking at here, Robo? Is it Islands and Cup then? It must be Islands and Cup. Okay, so if it's... Oh, he banned El Dorado. Okay. Okay, so he banned El Dorado and Angelina Jolie bans Hideout, which is funny, actually, because... That was, like, the most wallable map. <laughs> so, it's Cup. How sick is it that these guys are choosing the special Hidden Cup maps? I love it. Um, One second. I'm a noob. Scoreboard. Let's go, man. Let's go. This is a dream start to this qualifier for me. Wow, all of these picks are surprising to me. Look at this. Game number five. This is game number five. This decides who moves on to rounds two in this qualifier. And with Persians available for Angelina Jolie, with Vikings being a common pick in Hidden Cup 2, with so many civilizations being strong on this, they both went for Japanese. So it's a Japanese mirror matchup, and Japanese are not a bad civilization for this. I would say Japanese are possibly top five for this. But Japanese was not a common pick in Hidden Cup 2. So these players have obviously prepared something for us. Whoever loses this will not participate in Hidden Cup 3. It could be Tim. This would be a huge upset. Angelina Jolie is in the blue. Tim is in the red. Uh, if you have not seen this map before, I'll briefly explain it. Again, it's a map with options. Hidden Cup is a tournament of options, all right? <laughs> um, so many of the maps are hybrid maps where you can go water, but if you win water, it's not necessarily game over right then, like on some other maps. You can go land, but if you go land, you're possibly giving up water. And this map is pretty crazy because you can dock the center, you can send units on land in the center, uh, and also if you dock the right side, you can't pass over to the left, and same with the left to the right. Players will have three golds. You see the golds here for Angelina. Uh, players will have two stones. You see the stones here. Most of this is towards the back side of their base. And then there's always a three tiled neutral gold on the left side somewhere. And uh, there's always gold in the center as well. <clears throat> so it is called Cup. Uh, it's perhaps the most confusing map name because initially I wanted a map that looked like a cup. And that's the idea I gave Hank the Super Nerd, who's the one who created it. It doesn't really look like a cup unless you have a great imagination. <laughs> um, you know, if you turn your head to the side, you can kind of see it. But it's not it's not clear. So anyways, it's called Cup and we're sticking with that. So, so Japanese, why are Japanese good on this map? Well, because of flexibility. You need that on hybrid maps. Their mining camps, their mills, their lumber camps all are 50% off. Their fishing ships also have armor, and fish will be in harm's way on this map. So I think the ability to make a dock, but also make uh, buildings on land is very much needed here. It's a goblet. It is a bottle. Um, someone says they see pants. No, you can't see pants here. Um, it is a grail, you infidels. 
It's a trophy. Okay, so some of you guys, just like I said, use your imagination, but don't judge others for using theirs, okay? So notice how there's a theme at the start of this one. They both dock the left-hand side. Now, what's cool about this is you can hide your dock. You can walk over here. Your opponent won't scout it. They won't go water. You can dock this side, and this actually gives you a little bit more protection against any lands military that might come through. Scouting is a huge part of this map. Now, Angelina has not seen that Tim is docking just yet. Thank you, everyone, for your ideas. Uh, we are going to... Call it Cup, okay? The name is already decided last year. Uh, I appreciate your suggestions, though, and your input. Also, while we're at it, thank you to Tech Mirage, uh, Drook, Dagor, uh, uh, Dodge. <laughs> Please only resub if you have a name I can read. Masons, thank you for 27 months. Love you, love you, man. Uh, JSB, thank you, Moon Moon. What's really cool is we're, I'm seeing a lot of people who have only been here. Oh, Wall of Mint! Oh, never mind. It's Tim. Um... I'm seeing a lot of people who are here who were not here for Hidden Cup 1. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of people who are here who are not here for Hidden Cup 2. So, to have all my old cuppers out there... <laughs> that sounds weirdly wrong. Um, and to have all, all the new faces as well here is great. I don't know what our view count is at right now, but we're probably close to what Hidden Cup 1 finals had. So, let that sink in. That was in... September of 2018. Okay, we have over 5,000 for the first best of five in a qualifier. And the finals had 6,000 viewers. Hidden Cup 1. So, um, again, whether you've been here the whole time or just got here, awesome community. Um, I don't want to get feelsy right now, okay? We're not going to get feelsy. That's not going to happen. But I love you. Angelina Jolie is faster to Feudal Age, and Angelina Jolie is docking the left with another dock. Now, that was not meta before. Again, what's funny is, we initially used Salmon as the meme, right? We added Salmon for the meme, but it does an excellent job of balancing maps, because there's less food than other fish, and I always hate it when water's too strong. What will Tim do? Will he dock yep. as well? I mean, I see him going to golds. And, oh, he'll dock this side. See? And that's a big difference. That means Tim will be outnumbered on the left if Angelina Jolie goes for navy. Yeah, the relics look pretty good here. I would agree with you on that. Relics look pretty good. It was weird in the previous map. Um, glad it didn't make a difference, to be honest. So what's fascinating to me is I feel like they're over committing to water, but I always see different strategies on this map. Like there was once a game from Lix, who's a Chinese player who will also play in the qualifier. He went for Militia and Dark Age against the fishing ships. Like he literally drushed fishing ships and then went for fast towers afterwards. It was so weird. He just walked right across and towered the guy's dock. That was Tato, what Tato said to me originally, because I tested this. Oh! Angelina Jolie gets a Vil snipe! Tato was the one who originally reviewed uh, the first version of this two years ago with me. Tato said that he was considering building gates around the people's docks. <laughs> now check this out. Angelina Jolie got a Vil snipe. And now we'll just bring his scout over. And now Tim can't do anything about this. And now Tim can't cross. Was he prepared for this? Or was he not prepared for this? This is one of his home maps! You're kidding me, right? You can't cross here. He docked this side. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. <laughs> I see. You can still fire over the land. That's funny. Alright, so that worked, I guess. But to me, it looked like he was trying to cross over there. And he just realized, oh shoot, I can't do that. Well. Uh, I have seen a barracks for Tim. Uh, I do now see a barracks for Angelina and a whole lot of walls. Man, if this qualifier starts with an upset, we have a lot of crazy things coming for us. I mean, I guess you could say in theory Tim could add fishing ships on this side. See, look, he for sure tried to send his new navy over to that side. That was my question about Tim. How prepared was he going to be? Because he's not playing as much as he used to. 
I really like how Angelina played this, and I like how he's walling, because he knows Tim could catch up by going um, on land. And Tim is going for an archery range to go on land. And Tim, also good move to add fishing ships here. Might as well, right? You have that side protected for now. Um, I think for now, Angelina should probably take his foot off the gas a little bit on water. And think, yeah, about archers. Good move. <clears throat> so just so you guys know, um, you guys, the people who are mentioning the fact that this, this scoreboard is up here, I know it's large, but if you consider the fact that this takes up a whole lot less space... And the fact that there's already stuff behind this anyway, like my normal menu options are all behind this anyway. It's not, we are going to like take a look at making some changes for the qualifier, but I still think this is much better than what we normally use. And we are also going to have something completely different for the main event, okay? But yeah, I have buttons behind this you guys don't see. Just so you know. Yeah, we'll work on um, getting the sieves to the scoreboard for you. For now, uh, you guys will have to just live off the icons, and chat will have to help you out. But but what did Angelina just scout? Did you see that? He scouted there's a dock over here, and he ran past fishing ships. He also sees the archery range. Man, the scouting is so good. Forward market from Tim? What? Why is he... <laughs> it's just like... Tim does the funniest things, man. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, I love you to death, but let's chill with the copy pasta, please. What? It's a forward trade strategy? Oh, wait. Oh, I see. Angelina Jolie is building a market. So it's, it's obvious trade counter. If your opponent's trying to trade with you, you bait them into trading with your market. Now, in reality, what happened there is that he... He had this villager out here anyways, and he needed a market, so he figured, okay, instead of walking him all the way back to my base, we'll just make a market here. That's perfect. Guys, Tim has come back. Um, he, he, in my opinion, over-added fish here, but he has more fishing ships than Angelina does? Or, hold on, we're looking at six to, yeah, eight. And he's soon going to click up. So, rough start, but this dock on the right side... It hurt his chances of holding the left, but he secured the right. Interesting. Now, if you secure the middle, which is the right side, um, you also protect from archers going that direction. So it's interesting to me that Angelina wants to go this direction because I think it would be so much easier to just run across this way. Man, and imagine if he did that. Tim is so exposed. But oh my god, guys. They're both on the way to Castle Age, almost identical times. Oh, and Tim wanted to wall him in. Tim wanted to wall Angelina in. Well, that won't work, but at least Tim will know the archers are coming. Yep. He should realize the archers are on the way. Yep, villager dies. That villager was like a walking outpost right there. It's actually not the worst thing, because now Tim will send archers and skirms here to defend. I'm tense, man. And on one hand, Angelina is going to be bummed out of his mind if he loses this. But on the other hand, like, that would... I, either way, I'm going to be sad. Either way, I'm feeling way more emotion than I expected to feel today. Like, the next set that's coming today will be Velez versus Sital, and it's also expected that Velez will win. But Sital's been playing good, too. He's around to Angelina's level, so... <laughs> All right, fletching for both of them. And since they're going to reach Castlades at around the same time, I think this just comes down to army numbers. And Micro and Angelina. Good Micro. He killed three units. He hasn't lost a single one. Viper confirmed, man. My God, he's out microing Tim. Look at that KD. Oh, Tim could have to leave his gold here in a second. Crossbow and Bodkin will be coming in. Tim wants to go Elite Skirm. Um, but he doesn't have the elite scrims on the other side. Angelina is waiting to swoop in. It's really good, and now Angelina's adding galleys. Okay, so, good micro. Good work from Angelina. Angelina actually has not clicked Bod Canary yet. Tim reinforced a bunch over here, but now look. <gasps> Surprise. Oh, you killed my units on the right side? That's cool. Well, I'm back to the left. I have all the water control I would ever need on the left. You can't stop me from doing this. This is crazy. 
This is crazy. Uh, assuming the villager dies. Okay, that villager dies, and this TC could be denied. Follow her! Oh, he doesn't follow. Instead, he comes back to the gold. Where there's a villager who has a death wish. No bodkin for Angel Angelina. Did he think that he clicked that? He's going to three town centers. Okay, guys, I think Angelina misplayed a little bit, and I'm going to tell you what happens. So, first off, he doesn't have the food to click bodkin arrow, meaning that before he could justify taking fights here, since he doesn't have bodkin arrow, he can't take fights. And also, he's added a third town center when he has... It's possible he doesn't have enough on food to keep the town centers running. So keep an eye on the, the amount of villagers that he has. And keep an eye on the amount that Tim has. Tim is also on three TCs. Actually, he's producing... You can tell this guy's a classic player. He had three vills queued up in this town center. And he had none in the other two TCs. So that's a classic pro thing where they won't use the all... Like, a lot of players will toggle through TCs. Some players, I know Velez nowadays, is using a go-to-all hotkey. Um, or, sorry, go-to-all town center hotkey. Well, Tim has a little bit of salmon remaining. And these galleys will... <laughs> actually, <laughs> they'll take forever to take out the fishing ships, but they'll help a little bit. The crossbows come in. Such a close game. 52 eco for Tim. 51 for Angelina, who also still has about one fish remaining. Tim added two stables. Again, questionable in the food department, because knights cost a lot of food. And he's also adding a siege workshop. Hmm. The TCs are pumping for Angelina, so I think my concern there is... I, I would think I was off base there, and then we also had a siege workshop for Angelina. Okay. At what point does the center water, like this area here, become important to Angelina? Because you could see what it's doing to him on the left. Gives him a whole lot of areas to push from. I am surprised he's not using the crossbows more. There's something. If you have a dock here, you can make demos and fires. Tim has a whole lot of crossbows. Okay, here university for Tim. Yeah, meaning he'll probably go for ballistics. Ooh, boy. Angelina, I think you need a dock over here. I think you need a few fires and a few demos. Yeah, he sees the crossbows now. You could also say that Tim, as he's making fish traps over here, could probably make some fires of his own. <sighs> oh, this is so tense! War Galley is in on this side. So Tim will have to abandon some of that area. I'm so nervous, guys! Now, for the most part, players know what the other's up to. What Angelina does not know about is uh, the knights. Sorry, words are hard. Oh, but he built a house there! Okay. He knew that Tim knew that he had the Maganel out in the open, and he wisely built that house. Good micro from Tim to take out that villager. And the knights now loop around where there's it there is um there is an opening. Oh man, Angelina, you, you were so good! You were so well off! And now the knights just ran around and killed it anyways. Oh no. Oh, that hurts so much. Tim has so much army over here. Tim is really good at playing the map, and he knows about both of these golds. He's going for guard tower. He wants to go for guard tower, and he... He'll get that tower up. Wait, he might not? There's a mango here. That's still the knights to deal with, the crossbows to deal with, and the mango now from Tim, so... You need... Quite a few big shots. And Tim reacts instantly! And Angelina fails with the micro. It's all falling apart for Angelina. Oh, my heart is breaking for this poor guy. He played so good throughout this series. But now it's all falling apart. Guard Tower will probably be coming in soon. So many idle villagers. Does have the navy on the left. 
Just can't seem to deal with the right side. Guys, all three of his golds are here. He didn't protect the correct side. Okay, nice shot there, though. Uh, at this point, you need to hope your Maganel does damage for you. Tim, you just have to hit and run with Micro. Keep the crossbows alive as much as possible. Get as many kills as possible. Angelina misfires with that mango. Now, keep in mind, there's still more knights coming in. Those knights will come in and go right for that thing. Oh, no. And the crossbows will go to the left where villagers are exposed. That mango will for sure go down. And Angelina, he can't show up with more Mackinels against the crossbows because the knights will swoop in. The knights were the play. Everything was going so well, and then it all fell apart. That's competitive AoE 2 for you. Okay, nice house walls. You have to start somewhere if you're Angelina. Just take care of these crossbows. Tim's micro has been so good. Have a feeling I'm about to jinx him, and he's going to lose all of his crossbows, but it's still more than worth it. Tim sees this. Does he still have his micro fingers? Oh, that was a doubt split. <laughs> you could tell from you could tell they're from the same era, but what a play, Tim. What a play, Tim. He keeps the crossbows in it. The knights are still here. This feels so over now. And it is over. Angelina! Put up one hell of a fight against Tim, but Tim gets the win. Tim will move on to rounds two, where he will play in a best of seven against either Doubt or Huang. Whoever wins in that best of five will be very, very interesting and heartbreaking. Uh, chat, salute Angelina. Again, I don't know if Angelina's watching this, but what a series. Uh, I feel bad. This, this whole qualifier is going to make us feel very, very bad because we actually know who people are, unlike the main event. Um, I think that he showed a lot of people how good players in the top 50 can be. That might not be as known. Congratulations, Angelina, for getting two games off 10. I don't, I don't think... Um, Tim, sorry. I don't think many people thought you would do that today, including myself. It was just a hole in a wall. Honestly, just the hole in the wall and probably not docking the right side. Like, something went down there, because Tim was able to afford to make more crossbows, he was able to get ballistics, he was able to make two stables and make knights. Something happened with Angelina's economy, because it felt like he committed a whole lot less to Castle Age, and he certainly didn't commit to the correct side. Beautiful, beautiful play, though. Alright, so let's, let's see what this sells us. Tim had more food, he had more wood, he had more stone, and he had more gold. That's a lot more gold. Was it market abuse? W what made the difference there? Was it the mining upgrades? I'm not so sure. Maybe Tim had a few extra villagers on gold there, and then he was able to buy some resources. Maybe Angelina lacked a crucial eco upgrade, like horse collar. Um, but Tim moves on. So for us, we're still continuing today. Uh, so if you're planning on going anywhere, I would cancel those plans. Okay, because Velez and Satao also play in their best of five. Here's a look at the brackets. For those on YouTube, it is soon time to say goodbye. Um, every single best of five will be on my YouTube channel, so you don't have to worry about that. But this video will be coming to a close right after I talk about the brackets. Um, a lot of big names, a lot of big matches coming. This qualifier literally lasts two and a half weeks. Okay, uh, but Tim is up three to two now. He moves on. You can see Doubt and Huang will be facing off. I think that's going to be streamed on Monday. Um, but what we are going to cast next is... If you look a little bit more north in the bracket, or a little bit higher, Velez and Satel. And that's an interesting group too, because whoever wins in that set will face either Rubenstock or Project Belgium. Okay, before we say goodbye to YouTube, I should probably state YouTube. If you haven't already called off work for March 19th through the 22nd, yes, I'm telling you to call off work for video games. Yes, you're a nerd, but we are too. Don't worry. Uh, the main event for Hidden Cup will be then, okay? <laughs> Less than a month away. So if you have vacation days or you need to get really, really sick, just prepare in advance.